get to you. It's 10 seconds, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> I'll let you no. know when you're ready. Hold on, buddy. You're going to have to put your sound down, too. You see, I can hear an echo in the background on your part. All right. All right. Okay. So, okay. Welcome, guys, because I can hear. So you're going to have to mute me so I don't hear me when I'm talking on your end. You want me you to mute you? I, you want me to take you out sound-wise? Well, what I'm saying is now I don't hear the echoing. So that means you did what you got to do. All right, friends. We is live. Now, see, there we go. Hello? La, 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 la. Okay. Yeah. Remember, there's going to be a 10-second delay. So I hear the echoing on your end. 10 How about seconds. now? Try now. Remember? Try now, Sam. Yeah, I am trying it, brother. It's okay. Mm -hmm. la, 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 la. Yes, I can hear it. All right. What's well, going to be? It's gonna Are you okay me. now? Well, I hope so because I, when I speak, I hear the echoing, and if there's an echo, that's going to be a problem. But it's okay, bro. Just you know, you're Egyptian. You you come with problems. <laughs> All right. Hey. Boss. <laughs> Listen, guys. There's a 10 second delay. By the time I say something, reaches you 10 seconds. So bear with me. We got Osama Dakduk. He's in the hizzy. You guys see it? He's bald. I'm bald. But I'm better looking. Now, Osama, before we get into your presentation, helping Christians <clears throat> yeah. be used of the Holy Spirit to reach Muslims, to see that the Quran is not from God, Muhammad is not a prophet, and Jesus, son of God. <clears throat> I know you're Egyptian. Tell us a little bit about Egyptian, not the entire history of it, because people think Egyptians are Arabs. Are Egyptians Arabs? And what was the faith of the Egyptians before Islam took over, and what was their language? Sure. Uh, the sad thing is Muslims do not even know who, where does he come from to start with. They think Muhammad is a uh, descendant of uh, Ishmael, which is no truth what, whatsoever. Arabs are the descendant of Katura, uh, and this is the uh, concubine which uh, Abraham had a relationship with uh, after the death of Sarah. Some say it is his wife, but it doesn't matter. Now, the Ishmaelites, obviously, these are the, the descendants of uh, the relationship which Abraham had with Hagar, the Egyptian. Now, I don't want to mix confuse here. Why? Because Egyptian people are the descendant of Masraim, the son of Ham. So Ham have nothing to do with Sham. Sham is the father of Abraham. Ham is the father of the Egyptian. Masraim is one of his sons. And you can read about that, obviously, in the Genesis account, and that's not our topic for today. So we're not going to spend too much time here. Exactly. We, the Egyptian, call ourselves Coptic. In the original language, we call ourselves Coptic. We never call ourselves Arabs. As a matter of fact, nobody ever said the Arab Republic of Egypt or the Arab Egyptian until uh, Omar ibn al-As came, invaded my home country, Egypt, 641 AD. For 641, Egypt was a Christian nation. When I say a Christian nation, I'm talking about true strong Christian believers because of Act 2. We learn about some of the early Christians, uh, those who accept Christ in the first 3000s, they were Egyptian. And then obviously we know uh, from the continuation that many Jewish people who escaped Jerusalem, uh, where there's a great persecution, they, were, they came to Egypt. So uh, Christian Egypt is a good uh, 2000 years history. And I am a Coptic, a, an Egyptian. The word Coptic is not the name of a church. I'm a Baptist Coptic. There is Orthodox Coptic. There is a different denomination Coptic. So Coptic means Egyptian, which means we're not Arab. And by the way, Sam, you will never see a Muslim in Egypt say we're Coptic. No, Muslims call themselves Arabs. They don't call themselves Coptics. So see? we're not Arab. We are Christian Egyptian. Now, guys, understand what he just told you. Egyptians are not Arabs. And now some of you, even their reaction, I can see they're shocked. Egyptians are the descendants of Ham. They are not Arabs, you heard that, but unfortunately, you have Egyptian Muslims brainwashed by Muhammad, they'll say they're Arabs. So, remember that Egyptians are not Arabs, they're African, buddy. Egypt is in Africa, and they are descendants of Ham, and therefore, Usama is not an Arab, he's an Egyptian, <clears throat> Coptic, who worships the true God of all creation, Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. So, I ask the Lord Jesus to bless Usama, bless the internet connection, anoint him. 
I'm going to let him take it away. What he's going to focus on to help Christians, because what's the purpose of these sessions? To equip you by the power of the Holy Spirit to be used in the power of the Holy Spirit to destroy the lies of Islam, not destroy Muslims, destroy their lies, to take Muslims captive because we want to see Muslims get saved and fall in love with Jesus Christ. So Sam is going to give a presentation, and I'm going to be in the background. He's going to just give his presentation. I'll facilitate on the gross errors of the Quran. Now, why? Let me give you why this topic is important. Chapter 4, verse 82 of the Quran. Chapter 4, verse 82 says, "Had this, Have they not pondered over the Quran? Have they not pondered over the Quran? Had it been from other than Allah, they would find many discrepancies, contradictions. Now, what's beautiful about this is Usama has translated the Quran in English, the generous Quran, <clears throat> more accurate than the Qurans produced by the Muslims. But Osama, the Lord Jesus, anoint you. Take it away with your presentation. You have all the time in the world. Let me set it up so you can put, put your screen too. There you go. I'm going to be in the background. I'm going to be white. Thank you, Brother Sam. Uh, first of all, when we talk to our dear Muslim friends about the Quran, they will tell you the Quran is a perfect word of Allah, word for word. Not one error, not one contradiction. Because as you just said in Quran chapter 4, if it was from others than Allah, the Quran said, they would have found in it many contradictions or many uh, errors. I'm sorry to tell you, I'm glad that that verse is in the Quran. I prefer that verse than many other verses in the Quran because I can use that verse as a ruler, as a measurement to show you that the Quran cannot be the word of God. Uh, the first session here, and by the way, the Quran is loaded with errors. We can talk about the different type of errors in different programs in the future. Uh, we're talking about historical errors, geographical error, Pentateuch error, um, uh, moral error. I mean, this, this, there's plenty of errors. But today we're going to talk about grammatic errors and some of the contradiction, which is obvious contradiction for anyone who would like to know the truth. Now, the problem with our dear Muslim friend is this. When they read the Quran, they are not read it as a book, but they read it as the word of Allah. So they have this great reverence for the Quran. There's a point. You will never see a Muslim just hold the Quran like we do with our Bible, grab it in his hand and start reading. <laughs> no, 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 no. See, don't do that. First, you have to wash your hand. You have to dry your hand in a clean towels, you know. And then when you get the Quran, you put you don't put the Quran in the lower hand, you put the Quran up above, somewhere up, and then you grab it with 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 reverence. And when you open the Quran and you you, you don't just get a pencil and start marking the Quran, make notes. No, 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 no. The Quran has to be clean, period. You don't put a pencil mark, a color mark, or any mark, period. Because the word of Allah. Some Muslims they reverence that book so much that when they read it, they just simply put their fingers on the books. And they move one line at a time, one line until they got to the end, somewhere where there's some different design, like here, and then they stop and then they kiss their finger. You know why? Because those are the 87% of the Muslims in the world who cannot read the Quran in the Arabic language. So they believe in their mind, Brother Sam. They will receive blessing by touching the Quran by their finger. When it comes to the new picture, look like a different design. You know that's the end of the chapter. You kiss your finger and you think. They think by doing that, they'll be blessed. So obviously, Muslims will never think for a second that there is any error in the Quran. No, no, no. The Bible is corrupted, but the Quran is not. Even though if you show them from the Quran that the Bible is a perfect word of God, no, no, no. They believe that your Bible is corrupted and the Quran is holy because they believe it is the perfect word of Allah given to Muhammad. Now, we said 87% of the Muslims do not know Arabic. And obviously, most of you who are watching us right now, unless you're a Muslim who believes in the Quran and you know the Arabic language, you'll never get, catch any of the errors I'm going to share with you. So I'm going to go as, as simple as I can because, believe me, 90% of the Egyptians where I come from do not know that these grammatic errors in the Quran. But if the Muslim who are watching us right now or those who watch us in the near future are sincere with himself, like many Muslims who are sincere with themselves, and listen carefully to me, take the glasses of Islam out. Okay, so we're going to look at the Quran now, not as the word of Allah, but as a book to see if there is error, error in it. Because as long as the Muslim put the glasses of Islam on his face, there's nothing wrong in the Quran. Everything in the world is wrong, but the Quran is not. Even if I share with you, the Quran teaches that the earth is flat and it does not move. It doesn't matter. It's a perfect word of Allah and there's no error in it. So with that, with that said, let me share with you some of the errors. And in, in this slide we have here, there's a verse in the Quran, Quran chapter 2, uh, verse 24. 
It says in Arabic, No. Any Muslim reader says there's nothing wrong with that. In English it says actually, uh, no, no, my covenant will not be received by the unjust. Now the word the unjust in English, it's clear English, nothing wrong, it's good grammar, but in the Arabic language we have a problem. Why? Because the word azali mean here, this word here in the red, supposed to be written right by saying azali moon, not azali mean. I don't know, maybe you don't know Arabic, but you see the difference here. Me alif lam za lam alif mim ye noon azalimun lam mim wa noon two different words. Believe me or not, if I put that error in my writing in the Arabic class in my uh, Egyptian uh, school and I put it as zalimin instead of zalimun, my professor will give me an X. It's it's a mistake. It is an F, it's an error. He would, but if I'm putting the verse of the Quran and my professor is a Muslim, Mr. Muhammad. His name, he will, he will accept, accept the right. And you ask, why when I made the sentence outside in my normal talk about, you know, we went to the beach and we play, and then there was some, uh, there, there was some Zalimin there. No, 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 some Zalimun, not Zalimin. My professor would give me an F, he would give me an X, which means the sentence is wrong because it's just my talk. But if it is a word of Allah in the Quran with the same grammatic error, it's correct. Surprise, surprise. Why? Because Muslims who wear the glasses of Islam, they do not believe that there is any error in the Arabic of the Quran. And if there is error, that means it is in the grammar, not in the Quran. Surprise, surprise. If there's an error, it is in the grammar. And they will tell you, before the Quran was written, there was no grammar. Therefore, we have to use the Quran as a ruler or the measure to figure out if there is error in the language, not in the Quran. So that's how ridiculous they become. That they cannot find an error in the Arabic of the Quran, but the Arabic is in the grammar of the Arabic language. Hello? Are you serious? Now, I'm going to show you now some sentence, as we're going to see a little bit here, that it's written both ways. Zalimin and Zalimun. Sabi'in and Sabi'un. So you cannot tell me both of them are right. You know, and I'm amazed when you go online and search about how Muslims come out of these problems, they always create a great answer. They always fabricate answers. Now, Let's move on to the next slide here, slide number two, and it says, "Inna rahmatullahi qarib min al muhsinin." In English, surely Allah's mercy is near to the doers of good. The word here is mercy. The word mercy in the Arabic language is actually a feminine word. See, in Arabic we have masculine and we have feminine for every word. In English we don't have that. Therefore, when you read the Quran in English, no problem, no contradiction, no errors, no grammatic errors. But in the Arabic, we have a problem because Rahmah, Rahmat, is a feminine. Qarib, which is this first word, Rahmat, which is the mercy of Allah, is feminine in Arabic language. Qarib is masculine. Wait a minute, that's wrong. Why? Because if this word Rahmah is feminine, the second word must be feminine. So the right grammatic in the Arabic language, you say, in Rahmatullah, Qariba. Here is the word, Qariba. When you have the H in the end of the word that make it feminine, Qariba. So we have a problem. This problem cannot be understood in the English language, but you can only understand in the Arabic language. And I know Muslim will come with many, many fabrication. That's not an error. Some adaptor is wrong. Uh, Sam Jamon does not know what he's talking about. These people are not scholars. Our Muslim scholars are the scholars. No. If you are sincere with yourself, read these words in the Quran, read these sentences, and you know some grammar. You don't have to need to know. You don't have to be uh, like a master degree in the Arabic language. Just a simple grammar of high school or even prep school. You figure out there's an error here in the Quran. It's supposed to read in the Rahmatullah Qariba min al muhsinin because why? Because khabar inna must follow ism inna. Ism inna mu'annas, khabar inna mu'annas. Ism inna muzakkar, khabar inna muzakkar. So the first word inna will come after it. Ism inna, the, the, the first name. If it is feminine, the second word must be feminine. And that is where we have the error in the Quran. Let's move on to next, another one. We're talking about different grammatic and i'm just giving you examples i'm not going to cover all the errors of the quran we'll be here for a good couple weeks but we're going to make it short and sweet now here's in that verse quran chapter 7 verse 160 it says and we divided them into 12 tribes nations 
In, in English, uh, I know sometimes when I, my translation does not make too much sense, as you're going to see tonight, it's like, huh, something wrong. But I am perfectly translated the Quran from Arabic to English, word for word. Because what is the, what is the point of tri tribes? Okay, 12 tribes. We know the Jewish people were 12 tribes, the 12 sons of Jacob, the 12 sons of Israel. Why he puts the word nations next to it is wrong. I'm sorry. The Jewish people are one nation. It's called the Jewish nation, not nations. But somehow Allah squeezed that word, which you hear the word, Sittan, Umam, Wa Qata'anam, Ashra, Sittan. Here's the word, Sitt, which means tribes. Umam, nations. I'm sorry. They are one nation. The Jewish people are not 12 nations. They are 12 tribes, 12 Sitt in one nation. Okay? So Allah's wrong first about that word. But what's the problem we have here is this. The number is 12 Isnatai Ash. Now, this Isnatai Ash is supposed to be written Isnai Ash, not Isnatai, but Isnai. That's a grammatic error. I'm sorry, most of you do not know Arabic. It doesn't make sense, but that's an error. But then the word Aspatan, that's another error, which is the word tribes. Because in the Arabic language, if you say Isnai Ash, 12, the word Isnai Ash means 12. Sut, 12 tribe. You don't say tribes as you see it here in my translation in the body. Tribes, that's an error. It's supposed to be tribe, singular. So, isnai ash, sutton, not aspartan. So, here we go. Another grammatic error in the Quran. Let's move on to the next one. This is a very, very logic error. I mean, anybody who knows Arabic, figure out this is an error, but they will give you a fabrication that shows you here. But that's not an error. What we have here, we have here. These oh those are two the debaters who uh, dis, uh, uh, disputes dispute concerning their Lord. Okay, in Arabic, Hazan Khasman Ikhtasamu. Well, Ikhtasamu is plural. No, so in Arabic we have singular and we have dual and we have plural. Singular is one, dual two. In the grammar, we have dual. You don't have this in English. And then plural is three or more, three or millions. Now, the word has an, the word has an, which is these are, these are dual. Chasman, two enemies or two uh, people, two people argue, two people dispute, disputers, two disputers. Guess what the word he put here? He said, that's plural. That, that's bad grammar. I know it's supposed to be ikhtasama here. The dual word for dispute is ikhtasama, not ikhtasamu. Ikhtasamu is it means that it has to be three or more. But Muslim will tell you, well, these two who were disputing with each other, they have people inside them. So it's like two teams. Whoa, 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 whoa. The Quran did not say two teams, the Quran said two. We do not have a clue who are these two. There could be two singular, uh, two guys, two girls. Uh, you know, a husband and wife. But they tell you, well, there are two that mean each one of them have a group of them. That's why he put it in the plural forms. No, that is an error. Two people, ikhtasama, not ikhtasamu. Two team, ikhtasama. Because the grammar said, if the word khasman, which is the, the people who dispute with each other, argue, argue with each other, or angry at each other. If this is two, ikhtasamu must be two also. They have to match. Grammar have to match. You don't say one uh, kill and use the word kill in a plural form. No, one have to be uh, one qatala, two qatala, three qatalu. One, two, three different words come after them to match in the grammar. So here is the error. So the the, the word uh, 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 here indicate ikhtasamu mean is actually more than one, more than two, three or more, which make a grammatic error. Uh, let's move to the next one here. Now, that's another error in the Quran, a different type of errors. In Quran chapter 2, verse 17, we read, the parable is like the parable of he who candles a fire, so when it has shined its light all around him, Allah took away their, their light and left them in darkness. They cannot see. Now, the word in Arabic is tawqara, as a singular, singular, which is the one who started the fire. And then he said, 
when Allah brought the light on them, Allah took their light. The word there here is plural. One guy put the light, and Allah took their light. No, his light. If this one guy starts a fire and Allah took the light, you don't say took their light. No, his light. One guy. So obviously, it's supposed to be his light, not their light. That's an error. I mean, these are simple error. Anybody should know it. You don't have to have a degree in Arabic language. And sadly, Muslim cannot see anything wrong with it. Now, uh, here, well, in another verse, Quran chapter 2, verse 162, and the, uh, and the performer of the prayer and the bringer of the legal alms, uh, those who perform the prayer and those who give the legal alms. If you want to put it in a different word. Now, in Arabic, it said, Al-Muqimun, al muqimin as I almost said it right. I said it right. He said here, al muqimin as wal mu'tun as zakah That word here is wrong. Why? It's supposed to be al muqimun al muqimun as wal mu'tun as zakah Somehow Muhammad make it al muqimin as That's Arabic, Arabic uh, grammatic error. And obviously, Anyone know Arabic knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, now, this is, this is a very problem here. Also, a different type of grammatic error. In Quran chapter 2, verse 177, he said, It is not righteousness that you turn your face towards the east or the west, but righteousness is to who have believed in Allah and the last day. That's a big problem. Why? Because righteousness... It's written in the Quran. Righteousness is the, the is the one who believe in Allah. I'm sorry. For you and I to believe in God, that does not make us right. That's not righteousness. Righteousness is to believe in God, not in me or you who believe in God. So is this supposed to read? If you want to read it right, but righteousness is for you to believe in God. Believing in God is righteousness. Not me. I am a righteousness because I believe in God. Are you following me? So righteousness is not in the person, but in the belief in God. That is a theological error. And by the way, plenty of error like that, once again, throughout the Quran. Now, this is a problem I have when I was working on my translation of the Quran, the generous Quran. I correct it. And my editor fixed it. I, I, I put it first right. They fixed it. And I said, no, 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 no. We need to correct it again. So I put it in the wrong sentence in English. And my editors, they told me, you saw that. That's not good English. I said, I know. Leave it alone. Why? Because the problem is in the Arabic grammar, not in my translation. So the verse says here, in the Masala Isa and Allah, can Masala Adam, Khalaqaha, Mantra, Sumaqala, Kun, Payakun. In English. Surely the example of Isa with Allah is like the example of Adam. He created him from dust. Then he said to him, be, so he will be. Wait a minute. That's wrong tense. You should, you should say, so he was. Past tense? No. Muhammad in the Quran. Qul, qal Allah, kun fayakun. Fayakun here, it means in the future. It will happen in the future. Even though we already have Isa on earth, already passed. Is if you want to put it right in the Arabic language, you should say, You see this here, because that is a past tense. So he said to him, Be so he was, but that's not what Muhammad said. He did not say, but but he said, means future tense, so he will be. That is a bad grammar in the Quran. Right. Uh, this one here is confusion, and we got plenty of this one here, as we see in uh, chapter 48, verses 8 and 9. 48, 8 and 9, uh, it is an error which Muhammad put himself throughout the Quran because he himself to Allah and he speaks about himself. And now you don't know if he really continued to speak about himself or Allah or both of him and Allah. So I'm going to read to you what we have in English. Forget about the Arabic. Our Muslim friends, they can go to Surah Al-Fatiha and they know exactly what I'm talking about. But here, in English, Quran 48, verses 8, uh, uh, chapter 48, verse 8 and 9. Here we go. Surely we sent you, and you here will know it is Muhammad. How do I know that? Because listen to the rest of the verse. As a witness 
and a giver of good news and a warner. So Allah said to Muhammad as a witness, as a giver of good news, even though Muhammad did not come up with any good news. Amazing. I don't think Muhammad knows the word good news literally in the Arabic language. When we say Mubashiran, Mubashiran is uh, the word from the word Bishara, well, Bishara, which means the good news. The gospel is good news. Muhammad in the Quran used the word Mubashir, Bishara, sometime to say oh, and give him the good news of a painful torment. Excuse me, what? The good news is a painful torment? Yes, indeed. That's what Muhammad said. Because Muhammad does not know the word Bishara. Because there's an Arabic word, and he picked up from the Greek, put it in the Quran, think it's an Arabic word, and he has no idea. He may think that gives him the news. No, it's not just news. It's a good news. But in this verse here, Muhammad was sent by Allah to be a witness, a giver of good news, and a warner. So far, so good. We know the first you is Muhammad. And then listen to this. So that you, who are the next you? Is it Muhammad? No. These are the Muslims. So that you, the Muslims, may believe in Allah. Because we know Muhammad doesn't believe in Allah. Otherwise, how can Allah send them if he does not believe in him? So that may you, the Muslim believer, believe in Allah and his messenger. Or Muhammad will believe in himself. No. So the first you is Muhammad. The second you is the Muslim believers. And now listen carefully to this verse. The rest of the verse, and that you who's you here has a problem. What you is Muslim believers, what's they gonna do? That you may help him. Who's him? Is it Allah or Muhammad or both? Obviously, you cannot say it as Allah because Allah does not need any help, which means you're gonna help Muhammad. You use a Muslim believer, it's gonna help Muhammad and reverence him excuse me what the Muslim believers are going to reverend muhammad doesn't make any sense because the reverend belong to god and praise him praise muhammad no praise god so it's confusion muhammad added himself to allah and he said i am as a messenger as a warner as a giver of good news came to you that you muslim believe in me and believe in allah and now here's what you as muslim going to do you're going to help me or help Allah. Of course, you cannot help Allah. So obviously, maybe this one is belong to Muhammad. And then he said, you reverend me. Uh, I don't think anybody should be reverent with God. And then the third one, praise me. It's confusion. If you say that these words, help, reverend, and praise belong to Allah, I'm sorry, it does not work because Allah does not need any help. If you say help, and praise, and uh, reverend, and praise, to Muhammad, I'm sorry, you cannot praise Muhammad because that is shirk. Shirk is the greatest sin of all. To partner Muhammad with Allah, it is unforgiving sin. If you sin, sin, you spend it in hell forever. It's unforgiving sin. So it's a confusion. Now, why? Because it's just happened. Muhammad liked to add himself to Allah, start the vision of the Quran, and that is a chaos, and Muslims have no answer. And you cannot tell me, well, they're going to help Muhammad, but they're going to uh, reverend and praise Allah. No, 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 it does not work this way. It is well, 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 and, and, and whatever you're going to do to the first one, you're going to follow with the other two. So I said, I was tired, so I went to Brother Sam, and I ate, and I drank, and I slept. Me, the three things. You can say, well, he ate and drank, but he didn't sleep. No, if it is, uh, I am the only person who is doing these things and end and end, well, well, I'll tell you, which means all these three three things I did. So if you're going to reverend Muhammad and help Muhammad and praise Muhammad or reverend Allah and help Muhammad and praise Allah, and either way, it does not work. This is a big problem. Now, uh, similar to what we said earlier, it's Qareeb uh, and Qareeba. Uh, it's a verse here. The word Qareeb is masculine. Here it is, masculine, and here is feminine. And the Quran said, uh, Allah is the one who sent down the book with the truth and the uh, uh, skills. And what do you know? Perhaps the hour is near. I love how Allah in the Quran used the word perhaps. If this is the word of Allah, Allah should never, never use the word perhaps. I investigated this in the Bible. I found the word perhaps is mentioned three times by Peter and Paul, but not by the Holy Spirit, not by God, not by Jesus, not, not once. Because if God is God, he is all-knowing. 
And he said, perhaps. But then the problem is not about perhaps. The problem is the word come up perhaps. Perhaps the hour is near. The word near in Arab, in English, yeah, it could happen any time. But in Arabic, we have two words for near. There's qareeb or there's qareeba. Qareeb is masculine. Qareeba. You see the H in the end of the word. Qareeba is feminine. Well, guess what? The word Muhammad used in the Quran is the masculine. Oh, no, no. The hour is sa'ah. A sa'ah. The H in the end of the word hour. It makes the word sa'ah is feminine. So, therefore, the final word, the final word here is supposed to be qareeba. A sa'ah qareeba. Feminine, feminine. No. Allah in the Quran says sa'ah. Mask, sa feminine, Karib, masculine. Bad, bad grammar. All right, let's move on. Um, uh, this is what I call Muhammad sometimes through extra words uh, for the poetry to have the uh, end, the kafia, the uh, the saga. You know, sometimes you hear uh, in America people make the poetry and they throw a word in the end of every line to make the uh, the the kaf the kafia the. the the ribbon in the poetry move on beautifully. The same word. So it's the same thing as Muhammad here. It said here, uh, He adds the word kamila to the sentence which we do not need. I'm going to read you in English. It says, So whoever does not find something to offer, so fasting three days in the pilgrimage, while you're in the pilgrimage, you fast three days. And then he said, and seven when you return these are ten complete the word complete in the arabic language is not needed because anybody with logic anybody with common sense if you're gonna fast three days and then you're gonna fast seven days that mean you're gonna fast ten days i'm not gonna say ten complete days the word complete here camera that's not there's no need for it but obviously muhammad added to make the poetry work now Sometime I was once again here, and we're almost finished with this Arabic grammar. Of soon, so we're going to move to some other things in English, which you're not going to get lost. But I believe this portion we covered so far, it is for our good dear Muslim who knows the Arabic language, who believes the Quran is pure Arabic, perfect Arabic, no mistake in grammars. And I'm sorry, it is loaded. I'm just giving you a few examples. Now, in the Quran chapter 9, verse 62, Surah the Taba 62. Wallah wa rasulu a haq an yardu. In the word yardu here to please him, as we can see in English, is singular. But we're talking about Allah and Muhammad. Two. You don't say yardu, yardu huma plural. Uh, sorry, singular, uh, a dual. So Muhammad and, and, and Allah is two. Then the verb must be written for two. You don't say verb uh, singular for two people. It does not work that way. So in English, you, uh, um, I don't even have the verse uh, 962. Let me read it to you here. I thought I have the English for it. I just did not have enough time to put all these. 962, it says uh, here, they swear to you by Allah to please you, but Allah and his messenger are more worthy than... Uh, uh, that they should please Allah and his messenger. So surely to him, hellfire, abide in it forever. This is a great shame. And believe it or not, that's not the right verse. I'll give you the wrong verse. Uh, Tawbah 62. Uh, Tawbah 62. Allah and his messenger are more worthy to be pleased. That is the word for that verse. I want to six three miles jump to the next verse. So more worthy to be to be pleased in English. The nothing wrong with the word please because you don't have dual words. A word for dual in English, but in Arabic here we have a problem. Your do singular. Your do homa is the right word to say it, which is the plural. Uh, now this is this this one here is, is really is really ridiculous. Why? Because we do have in Arabic. Two different letters in the alphabet. One is the letter Saad and one is the letter Sin. Saad 
and seen. In that verse, in Surah Al Ghashi, uh, uh, in Quran, verse 22, it says here, and the word as you see it, is written, this letter here, the top one, yeah, Tahra. That is very bad. I mean, sorry, if you don't know how to spell Arabic, and that is in the word of Allah in the Quran. I, I, I wish I see some Muslim give me an answer for this. It's supposed to be written like this. Mosaiter, be mosaiter, meh meh, mean seen, yeah, tahra. We're supposed to use that letter here, seen, not the letter saw. Imagine with me, in English, if you have a letter, a word like, uh, supposed to be written by the letter K, but you write it with the letter Q. That's bad English. So if you say, um, 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 I don't know how the word here. Any word. Think about a word in English. It has the word Quran, uh, Q. And instead of you put Q, take the Q out and put a K. It sounds the same, but it's wrong. In Arabic, musaitr and musaitr sound like the same, but it's bad. A, a word written with K. Like if I say Coca-Cola, I'm going to write it. Instead of with C, I'm going to write it with a letter K. You still can read it Coca-Cola, but it's a wrong spelling. Allah is unknowing. Muhammad. Can you hear me? the excellent and the Quran, the perfect words written with wrong letters. Instead of the letter seen, we have the letter saw. Instead of the letter C, I put the letter K. Hey, Osama, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, brother. Let me just give you one example. I didn't mean to interrupt. It's like spelling sure. queen, the word queen with a K. Yeah. Queen, instead of with a Q, you spell with a K. That's the mistake you're mentioning. So I just wanted to say that. Queen, yeah. you spell with perfect. a K. All right, but go ahead. I, I'm trying to think of an uh, example in English, and I could not get one. But I'm glad I'm glad you got it. So queen with a Q, you cannot write queen with a K because then, I'm sorry, you don't know how to speak English. Maybe like I do sometimes. I do many uh, wrong uh, words. Sometimes I use the letter P instead of B and B instead of P. So I say popcorn instead of popcorn or I drink Pepsi instead of Pepsi. Okay? You got my point. You're, you're good, Sam. I really appreciate it, man. You're good. Now, uh, sometimes Muhammad read, repeat words in the verses for no reason. And just to add another couple of words, for example, here in Quran, Al Mada Sitta Sabin, Al Mada Samasatin, the book of uh, chapter 5 in the Quran, the table, verse uh, 67. All you messenger, listen carefully, proclaim what has been sent down to you from your Lord. And if you do not, so his messenger will not be proclaimed. Excuse me, what? But you listen to the Arabic, it's beautiful. Yeah, you are Rasul It's a joke. I'm sorry for those who understand Arabic. So it's like read my word. If you don't read it, then you have not read it. But, or like you're saying, in Allah Ma'asabri is a sabr. There's a statement Muslim always say, surely Allah is with the patience. If they are patient, well, how can they be patient if they're not patient? Repeating words for, I don't know, the poetry or whatever, there is no reason to add this word in the Quran. Uh, now let's go to some contradictions. Uh, I, this is enough for grammar. I maybe get a few more here coming up, but you know, for, let's go to uh, contradiction. Um, it's amazing that not only the Quran contradicts the Bible in these things, but the Quran contradicts the Quran, and then you add to it the Hadith, which is the saying of Muhammad, you add another contradiction. You know, for me, my dear brothers and sisters, if I'm reading the Quran, and I find something in the Quran disagree with something in the Bible, I have to be honest with you, if I am a just person, uh, I'm not going to take a side, I would say there is uh, three chances. A, the Quran is right, and the Bible is wrong. B, the Quran is wrong, and the Bible is right. C, both of the Bible and the Quran are wrong. I mean, I don't have a, 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 another option. So if I tell you, uh, Allah created the heaven and earth in six days. Good. Uh, that's what the Bible, God and the Bible created heaven and earth in six days. But I go to the Quran and I say, God, Allah, the God of Muhammad, small g, created the heaven and earth in eight days. Well, now we have a problem. Is it eight days or six days? There's three options. Number one, the Quran is right because there were eight days, not six days, and the Bible is wrong. Or the Bible is right that six days is uh, accurate and the Quran is wrong because they were not there was there were not eight days. Or C, both of the Bible and the Quran is wrong because actually 
the creation took maybe uh, four days or maybe 12 days, some other numbers. These are the three options. But what would you do when you go to the Quran and you see that Allah said six day creation, and then another look, another chapter of the Quran, as we can see here, eight days of creation, and then you go to Muhammad saying in the hadith and he tell you there are actually seven days in creation. And what's worse, that in these seven days of creation, as Muhammad gave us exactly what Allah created in each day, Muhammad forgot to mention the creation of the heavens, which in the Quran took two days. So now we have two more days for Allah to create the heavens to the seven days. Now we end with nine days. So is it six, eight, seven, or nine? Well, that is a problem. And in that case, with all respect to our dear Muslim friends, we have to say that Muhammad lost his uh, respect or his credibility he's no longer a prophet because not only he contradicts the bible but he contradicts himself in the quran as it is the word of allah and you add in the hadith he contradicts his own quran then we have a problem it's a chaos now some translations they will not say six days or eight days i, I read it and it said six periods even though the word yawm is the Arabic language means a day and when you read the hadith it said clearly that even Adam was created in the end of the day just before the sun go down. And in the hadith, Muhammad is tell us that he actually created this on Monday, this on Tuesday, this on Wednesday, this on Thursday, this on Friday, and Muslim scholars disagree. Did Allah rest on Friday or Allah rest on Saturday? I mean, Allah finishes work on Friday or Saturday. So we're talking about physical days, 24 hours, not period. Obviously, those who use the word period in the translation, they did it with smart move, so they will get rid of the problem with six day creation or evolution creation. You know what I'm talking about. We Christians do not have any objection to say six day creation, and we believe in six day creation. And I don't believe God needs extra time to hire more trucks to carry dirt to planet Earth. He created the whole universe by the spoken word. So if He can do it like that, He can do it in one second or less than a second. If you choose to, so. but in his wisdom and in his will, he created them in six days and he rested from his work on the seven days. Let's look at the Quran. Uh, first, let's look in Quran chapter 50, verse 38. Listen carefully. And indeed, we, we here is Allah, created the heavens and the earth, and what is between them in six days, and no weariness touch us. Oh, God did not, Allah, the God of Muhammad, did not get tired. No weariness. It's like Muslims sometimes go to the Bible and say, and God rested on his on the seven days. But look, look, the Bible said God got tired and he rested. No, God rested from his work. As a matter of fact, if you look for the word rested throughout the Bible, you see uh, that the earth rested for 40 years when King Solomon became the king after King David. That does not mean the earth got tired. No, there were peace. There is no war. There is no killing. Stopping the action of whatever was happening is resting. So God stopped working. That does not mean God got tired, but God stopped his creation in six days. And since the six days until today, God did not create anything new. So, so now we find out from Quran chapter 50, verse 38, that God, the God of Muhammad, small g, Allah, created the heaven and earth and everything between them in six days. Let's go to Quran chapter 41, verse 9. Say, have you become infidel in him who created the earth in two days? And you make partners with him. This is the Lord of the world, and he made in it stabilizers to on on to on top of on top of it, and he has blessed it. By the way, the stabilizers is the mountain, and I'll put it on the earth to stop it from shaking. We can talk about that some other time in, in this. But he said here, and he measured it in it. Provision in four equal days. So Allah created the earth in two days. He, uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the, he, Allah first created the earth in two days, and then He bought everything on it in four days. So total, so so far is six days. And then He said to uh, to those who ask, then He turned to the heaven, and it was smoke. And so He said to it, and to the earth, come willingly or Gradually, uh, no, this word here, hmm. gradually, hatefully, against your own will, against your own wishes. They said, we come willingly. So, in verse 12, he completed them seven heavens in two days. The earth, two days, 
everything he created on earth in four days, six days, and now the heaven he created in two days, a total of eight days. Any person who will take the glasses of Islam out and read the Quran as a book, you find out we have a problem. Why? Once again, Quran chapter 50, verse 38, six days of creation. Quran chapter 41, verse 9, eight days of creation. But that's not all the problem. Why? Because notice in the hadith, I don't have it with me. Muhammad, once again, he told us, what did Allah create in every day? He started in some hadith, and Muslim scholars disagree about when is the beginning of creation. Most of them will tell you it starts on Saturday. Okay? Why? Because they want to make the Friday the day of prayer in Islam, the holy day in Islam. And Adam was created on the last day on Friday. So in Muhammad saying, he created things on Saturday, which is wrong. Because Ahad, the first day, is the first day of creation. But that's okay. So, And then we will tell you what Allah created in each one of these days. I can get you the hadith a little bit later. Maybe question and session. I can grab it. Or maybe if Sam have it, he can bring it to us. And then he said, and then he created Adam on the end of the seven days. When you look at this account, once again, of Muhammad and the seven days of creation, surprise, surprise, heavens is not there. And here in this Quran, in, in, in verse 12, so he completed them seven heavens in two days. So I have to add to the seven days of creation of Muhammad in the Hadith two more days because we have to have a heaven. If we don't have these seven heavens, the universe is not complete. Now we end with nine days. So my question to, do, to you, my dear Muslim friends, was it six days creation, eight days creation, or nine days by adding the two days to what Muhammad said in the Hadith. Now, the important question, even these two verses we just read, what was created first and what was created second? Did Allah create the heavens first and then the earth? And by the way, we have to say earth with an S in the end of it. Why? Because plural. Muhammad assured us there are seven heavens and seven earths. And there's a wonderful Hadith, maybe shows you a little bit after we get into this, to answer this question first. What was created first, the heavens or the earth? Well, guess what? According according to Quran 41, 9, we know that he created the heavens in the end. In verse 12, as we just read a minute ago, so he completed them seven heavens in two days. So he created the earth, everything on earth in six days, and then the heavens was created in the last two days. That is the day number Seven and day number eight. Now, if you go to Quran chapter 79, verse 27, listen carefully. Are you stronger creation or the heavens he built? He raised its height, so he leveled it. Then in verse 29, and he gave darkness to its night and brought forth its light. In verse 30, and after that, he flattened the earth. So the creation of the earth come after he created the heaven. This is a problem, a big problem. Quran chapter 41, the earth was created first, and then he created the heaven the last two days. In Quran chapter 40, 79, verse 27, he created the heavens and finished it, and then, and after that, after that means what? His order. First he created the heaven, after that he flattened the earth. I know a Muslim can come up with all these different um, uh, explanation, or I say fabrication, but I'm sorry. Once again, take the glasses of Islam out, read the Quran. It is not perfect. There are plenty of errors. Now, let's move on in our study. Uh, this is just a journal about the word of Allah. Can the word of Allah be changed and replaced and take some verses out, get rid of them, bring new verses, abrogation? In the uh, beginning of uh, my Quran here, I got a small uh, uh, document, a small uh, uh, study about the doctrine of abrogation. Uh, you read it, you get a little bit an idea what it is. Maybe in the future, Brother Sam, I don't know if you have covered this or not. We can do a study about abrogation of the Quran. But if you go to Quran chapter 18, verse 27, it said, And recite what had been revealed to you from the book. Watch book, you're talking about the Quran here. Of your Lord, the book of Muhammad, Lord Allah is the Quran. And listen carefully, no one can change his words. No one can change his word. 
and that, and that makes the Quran the word of God. If the word, if, if God is God, if Allah is God, then His word cannot be changed. I mean, kings cannot change their words. If 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 somebody in authority and he's respectful, he should not make an order and change his mind. So God, if Allah is God, that verse will be perfect. No one can change God's word. And by the way, if you think about it, Muslims say they believe in the Bible, they believe in the Torah, they believe in the book, they believe in the gospel. And trust me, they have no idea what they're saying when they say that. But if they believe in these books as Allah surrounds the Quran orders them, you have to believe in it. You cannot be a Muslim unless you believe in the Bible. Which Bible? The corrupt one? No. Why? Because the Bible cannot be corrupted. Why? Because it's very simple. If the Bible is the word of God, if the Torah ever was written by Moses and Moses wrote it correctly, then it is the word of God. And so if Zabur, the book of Psalms, was written by David and it was given by God as a revelation, then it is perfect. Because God will not give a corrupt Torah, uh, uh, Old Testament five books, uh, first five books, and Allah will not give David a corrupt uh, uh, Psalms. And if the gospel was given to Isa, son of Mary, as Muslims claim, by God, that means it's his word has to be perfect. Now, if these books was given by God to these three prophets, Moses and David and Jesus, Isa, uh, Jesus of Muhammad, that means this word of God cannot be changed. Why? Because Allah said, none can change his word. That makes sense. The Quran is the word of God, cannot be changed, cannot be uh, abrogated or replaced by some other verses. But surprise, surprise, if you look with me here to the following verse, that is uh, chapter 16 in the Quran, the B, and verse 101. Listen to this one. And if we exchange one verse in the place of another verse, excuse me, what? Who's speaking here? Allah Almighty is speaking here. And Allah says he will exchange some verse in the Quran by another verse. I thought Allah's word cannot be changed. <clears throat> I thought Allah's word is perfect. I thought Allah's word is complete. Obviously, this is not true. Because here we know the doctrine of abrogation. And when we study these verses, we can do this, as I said, in a future program. We well, guess what? This contradiction is not uh, a simple one to be swallowed. It's not God that's God. See, Muslim will tell you this is a progressive revelation. No, it is not progressive revelation. It's not move from, from A to B to C to D. No, 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 no. It is from A to Z, the opposite. So Allah will ask Muslim to do something, and in the other verse, he will do the opposite. That's not progressive revelation. That is contradiction. That will put the Quran aside. As Brother Sam said earlier, have they considered the word of Allah? If it was from others than Allah, they would have found in it many contradictions. And that is the problem we have with the Quran. Loaded with contradiction. And Muslim scholars tell you, has in ayam and sukha, this verse is abrogated. And has in ayam and sukha, and this verse is abrogated. And they gave you the new verses, which Allah used to abrogate the early verses. And what is abrogation? It is to cancel, to erase, to delete, to replace. Oh, Allah replace. Yes, indeed. And if we exchange one verse in a place of another verse that goes against what we read in Quran chapter 18 verse 27 where none can change the word of Allah with all respect this is a big problem in the Quran <clears throat> uh, uh, I want to you know, brother, brother Sam I don't know how much time do you have for me I can go for another two hours but I hate to take the time of the show I have no clue what's going on here so, uh, Sam, if you if you want to give me another what? 10, can you hear me? 15 more minutes. What do you want to do, brother Sam? 10, Brent, 10, can 15 more minutes? Yeah. I just want okay. to make you hear me. Well, yeah, we can talk past each other. So, well, that's up to you, man. We have 300 people. Hopefully more people come. It's up to you. Okay. you want to 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes? We're loving it. People loving it. And you got some Muslims getting upset with you already. You got a name, a guy named Abbas. He goes to Speaker's Corner. And I said, okay, you can call me on Skype. He goes, in time, inshallah. All right, so we'll see what questions have. But go ahead. You got time. Go ahead, my friend. If you have any question, any Muslim, any Christian, any Jew, any atheist, have a question, please feel free to send it to us. And I'm not saying I, I'm all-knowing. I'm not God Almighty, so I'll do my best. Question with Brother Sam here. He knows much better than me. He is a great uh, uh, theologian in his head he have all the knowledge he said and if we could not find the answer for your question today lord's willing 
the earliest time we can have back again another meeting we'll give you answer for all your questions well so we'll see all right uh let's talk about isa son of mary uh did isa first of all let's talk about the birth of jesus i'm gonna take you to a couple of verses in the quran uh, so um let's go to quran chapter 3 and verse uh, 45 and I'm going to compare this to Quran chapter 19, verse 17. Notes here, as I said to you earlier, sometime Muhammad tell us a story of the Quran does not match what we have in the Bible. And to be decent, to be just, I don't want to be taken aside. I can easily tell you, yes, the story of the Quran is accurate and the story of the Bible is correct, is, is, is inaccurate. It's, there's some error in the Bible. That's why Allah said Muhammad was the final Quran as Muslim, you know, give us this broken record. He repeats himself a hundred times. But if I'm reading the story in the Quran, it does not match what's in the Bible, but at the same time, the story is repeated in the Quran and it is also contradict what's in the Quran, then we have a problem. Because the testimony of the Quran is contradict each other, then I have to put the entire Quran aside and I have to stick with the Bible. Once again, they both can be wrong. The Bible and the Quran can be wrong. Unless we have enough evidence to prove that the Bible is right, they may be both wrong. Obviously, we have the evidence to prove that the Bible is a perfect for the God. Now, in Quran chapter 3, verse 45, I want you to listen carefully. When the angels, was قَالَتِ الْمَلَائِكَةِ Malaika in the Arabic grammar, is plural. It has to be three or more. It, it cannot be two. Because two, we, we say... Malakan. If it's one angel, we say Malak. Where's Qal al Malak ya Maryam? Where's Qal al Malakan ya Maryam? Where's Qal al Malaika? Three or more. It may be three, it may be ten million. Who knows? But it's more than three to make it plural. When the angel said, O oh Mary, here it is, O oh Mary, surely Allah gives you the good news. With a word from him, his name is the Christ. Isa, son of Mary, exalted in this world and in the hereafter and of the near. Now, uh, I don't know if you have seen some of these shows. I've seen some of these shows where a bunch of people talk at the same time. It's a little bit weird, but uh, I don't I think Superman, in the beginning of the Superman uh, movie, you see different uh, lords or different something, and they all talk at the same time. Uh, so I can only use my imagination because this is the reality. When the angels said, when the angels said, they're all speaking one time. So I'm guessing, I'm not going to go for 100, but I say three angels. Okay? The lowest number for plural, for plural is three. So can you imagine here's Mary and three angels talking to her at the same time? Same words. Here we go. Three people. Oh, Mary, surely Allah gives you the good news with a word from him. His name is the Christ, Isa, son of Mary, exalted in this world and in the hereafter, and of the near. Trust me, that's what happened. Mary will run scared all the way, 10 miles away from that three angels talking to her. It's a little bit weird, okay? By the way, when Muhammad met with one angel, he ran away, 40 years old man. He ran away to his wife in a cold night. He's sweating. But when we read the true account in the Bible, we don't see three angels. We see one angel. And what is angel? Big creature with big wings. No, no, no. Angels do not have wings. And I learned that, by the way, from Brother Sam when he was teaching this in our Saturday uh, radio broadcast a few years ago. Angels, I was confused between seraphim and angels. So I guarantee you what happened is Mary met with one man who was a messenger. He's an angel. And he spoke to her like a man talked to Mary. A man talked to a woman. And when we go to the Matthew account, and maybe Brother Sam can open the Bible and get them read for us, we don't read any of these words. Literally, there is no three angels talk to Mary, and they were not angels with wings, as Muhammad or Muslims claim, as Gabriel have, you know, thousands of wings, uh, 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 wings, uh, it's an unbelievable creature, huge creature. And uh, the size of angels in the Quran is, uh, according to the interpretation of Muslim scholars, to the verses of the Quran, is huge. Literally, the distance between the earlobe and the shoulder of an angel is miles and miles. So these angels are great creatures, huge one, but that's not what we believe. But in that verse here, three angels or more who are speaking to Mary and tell her that sentence. When I open my Bible, if I go to the book of Matthew, 
And I read when Angel Gabriel talked to Mary, he did not say, Oh, Mary, surely Allah gives you the good news with a word from him. His name is the Christ, Isa, son of Mary. This word never mentioned in the Bible. So now I have to come to the conclusion. The Bible is wrong or the Quran is wrong. How do I know which book is telling the truth? Well, if I found another passage in the Quran contradicts what we just have read right now, that will put the Quran aside and make the Bible true. If the Bible is true, do we have enough evidence from the Holy Scripture, all prophecies written hundreds of years before Christ came in the flesh to prove this is true? Yes, indeed. Listen to this, what is written in the Quran, chapter 19, verse 17. So she, that's Mary, took a veil apart from them. By the way, the entire story in the Quran is a joke. It does not fit with the culture setting where Mary was. Let me read to you the brief verse, uh, verse 16, because I believe it's important. Quran chapter 19, verse 16. And it says here, And remember in the book, what book? The gospel. Yes, Muhammad does not talk about the Quran here. Muhammad is talking about the Bible, the gospel. Maryam, when she went apart from her family to an eastern place. Excuse me, what? This not even happen anywhere in the Middle East. It will not happen in Mary's days. It's like you live in Florida and you turn 18, a young lady, 18 years old, and she decided to leave and go to New York or go to California. You don't do that in Mary's days. That's not what the Bible said. You don't leave and go anywhere you want. Okay? Does not fit with the culture setting of where the story. If I read that verse alone and I'm a guy came from the Middle East, I say, I'm sorry, this is not a true story. Why? Because in Mary's days, 2,000 years ago, when girl turned 18, they don't leave home and go anywhere they wish. It does not happen. But then he said here, so she took a veil apart from them. So we sent our spirit to her. What? Our angels to her? No, our spirit. Okay, now how our spirit, how Allah's spirit went to man. By the way, all Muslim scholars agree 100%. Our spirit here is angel Gabriel. Let's continue. So he appeared to her a normal human. So he appeared to her a normal human. Was he three angels talking to Mary or a man? What kind of man? Normal. What is Muslim scholarship to normal? A guy, uh, six feet, maybe five, ten, six feet, mustache, beard, uh, eye, two eyes, two ears, two hands, a normal human. He's not too big, he's not too short, he doesn't have any wings, just human. That's a problem. Because in Quran chapter 3, I know that Allah sent angels to speak to Mary. And they all speak at the same time. Now in Quran chapter 19, Allah did not send angels, he sent his spirit. I know Muslims are completely wrong about calling his spirit, Allah's spirit, to be an angel. Give it up. That's fine. Skip this part. And that angel who appeared to me is the spirit of Allah did not talk as three angels, but talk as one human. And what we have there? She said, surely I seek refuge with the merciful from you if you were a fearer. He said, wait a minute, one human Speaking by himself, they did not say they said it is his said. I am surely I am only a messenger of your Lord that I may grant to you a righteous son. Wait a minute. Not only is the sentence here once again does not match what we have in the Bible, but it does not match what we just read in Quran chapter 3, verse 45. Forget about the numbers, three or one, even the words. The words the three angels spoke to Mary is not the same words which that one angel spoke to Mary, which is appeared to her like a human. My dear Muslim friends, I'm not even using any uh, uh, extra material. I mean, I have a couple of verses open in front of you. Here we go. One angel, no, three or more. Three angels, no, one human, normal human. The sentence here is different than sentence here. So what I'm asking you, my dear Muslim friends, to do is this. Get yourself two Qurans, like I'm doing here, and open them side by side. Take the glass of Islam off. You don't need the glass of Islam. Just use your, your, your brain, your common sense. You read with your eyes, 
Use your brain. Put the two books side by side and read. That's the story you read in Quran chapter 3. Even close, not the same. Close or closer to the story you read in Quran chapter 19. No. Completely different. Every word. Even when you get to the question. When Mary said, it's the same question. Quran chapter 3 is the same question Quran chapter 19. How can I have a son when no man has touched me? Same question. Go read the answer of the angels and the answer of the human. The answer of the angels is all what we have is the word likewise. That is only matched between the answer of the three angels or more. It could be 10, it could be 100, but I'm going to go for three to make it a little bit logic. You go, you want to. You don't want to hear 100 people talk to you in one voice. So the three angels who spoke to Mary said, likewise. And the rest of the sentence has nothing to do with the answer in Quran chapter 19 of that one human who said, likewise. And the rest of the sentence is different. You want to show it to you? Let me show it to you. Here we go, Quran chapter 3. I wish I had time to put it on the screen so we can read it together for the sake of time. But we'll go here, 3 and verse... 40. You have time, Osama, no rush. So take your time. He's the son of Mary. My Lord, in verse 47, she said, My Lord, how can I have a son when no man has touched me? Notice here, by the way, she's not talking to three, she's talking to one. Surprise, surprise, Muhammad made a boo-boo. She's supposed to be speaking to three ends, but the three ends some somehow or, or more they disappeared. Only one guy is talking to me now, one angel. She's called Lord. How can I have a son when no man has touched me? He said, Now it's one person speaking to her, not three angels, but one person. Likewise, here is the one word which comes in answer between chapter three and chapter 19. Likewise, Allah creates what He wills when He makes a command, so He surely only says to it, Be so it will be. And he will teach him the book and the wisdom and the Torah and the gospel. And we go on and on with their answer. Now let's read the same question of Mary in chapter 19 and verse uh, to the minute here. Verse 20. She said, how can I have a son when no man has touched me and I was not unchaste? The word, the word, and I was not unchaste does not exist in Quran chapter 3. But forget about this. The same question. I'm a virgin. I never have such relationship with any man. Listen to the answer. He said, likewise. Here we go. Same word, likewise. Listen to the rest of the answer of that human who was the spirit of Allah who appeared to Mary as a normal human. He said, what? Likewise, your Lord says, it is easy for me and we will make him a sign to the people and a mercy from us. And it was decreed matter. Different words. Which account is accurate? Which story is accurate? What we read in Quran chapter 3 or what we read in Quran chapter 19? And we're just at the birth of Jesus. We haven't even moved any further than that. Something is wrong. The Quran cannot be from Allah. Because if it was from others than Allah, they would have found in it many inconsistencies. And the consistencies is a normal description to the word of Allah in the Quran. All over the Quran. Not just in that verse of Jesus. Everything in the Quran. Allah says something, and then Allah says something completely different. You know what? I believe, here's, here's my, my conclusion to the contradictions of the Quran. Muhammad made up his Quran in 23 years, or close to it, 13 years in Mecca, which we call Mecca Qurans, Mecca verses, and then he immigrated to Medina, 210 miles north, and in Medina, Muhammad made uh, new verses, Medina verses. So Muhammad will tell a story about Isa, okay? Isa, son of Mary. Quran chapter 3. And Guess what? Quran chapter 3, if we look here in the beginning of my book, Quran chapter 3 is Medini chapter. So obviously, Quran chapter 3 was written in the days of Muhammad. How about Quran chapter 19? Quran chapter 19 is Mecca chapter. Oh, so Quran chapter 19 was written, say, in the first uh, 
four or five years of Muhammad claiming to be a prophet. As Muhammad was making the story of Quran chapter 19, he said all the things he said. Five years later, ten years later, he rewrites the story. Notice, notice now, nothing written in a book form because have Muhammad wrote the book, the Quran, in a book form, it would be easy to go back and look at what did I put there uh, ten years ago? Oh, it was uh, chapter 19. Here, I talk about Mary, and she was talking to a human, a normal human. So now I'm going to make a new a new passage in the Quran. I will keep her Mary talking to a human. And by the way, what did he say there? What she said? He put the same verses, the same words. No, there was no written book. So Muhammad forgot what he said. And boy, boy, if we have the entire Quran, you'd be surprised. Maybe in the entire Quran, there's another four or five stories of Isa, son of Mary, and how she spoke to different people with different words. Because obviously, many of the Quran is gone. We can talk about that some other time. We have enough evidence. Many of the Quran is gone. We do not have original Quran as Muslim claim in the West. Not only they claim that the Quran is perfect, no error, no contradiction, because Allah said so. And they will tell you, we still have the original. No, they don't. I don't believe we have any original Quran, period. I don't think we have any Quran in the first 100, 150 years. Only God knows the story about the Quran. But here we see in the Quran, contradiction. Quran chapter 3 came later in Medina, and Muhammad changed the words. Notice here, he makes sure that now Mary is not to be worshipped. Mary have to worship, because in Medina, Muhammad now have great, uh, a greater army, greater impulse, nobody can tell him what to do. So in Quran chapter 3, he makes sure she kneels with the kneelers to worship with the worshippers, and she's not a god, as if Christianity teaches that Mary is a god, as Muhammad made an error in the Quran. Quran chapter 5, verse 116, when Allah said, O Isa, son of Mary, did you tell the people to worship you and your mother as gods beside me? I'm sorry. Where did Muhammad come up with that? Maybe he got wrong information about Isa, wrong information about his mother Mary, wrong information about what Christian believe. But the contradiction is all over the Quran from one passage to another. Uh, if you continue to read the story about Jesus, you find that, for example, Jesus uh, was not crucified. Jesus never died. But in reality, you go to other passages of the Quran and say, Jesus said he will die. Peace on me the day I was born, the day I, was, I will die, the day I will ascend to heaven. Well, that is the future tense. Okay? Uh, and how is this going to be? Oh, Jesus will come back in the end of time, and he will be a good Muslim, and we have four wives, and he will... Uh, break the cross, get rid of Christians and kill the pig, get rid of the Jews and he will be a good Muslim and then he will die. Really? How about Isa, inni mutawafika. Isa, son of Mary, I am causing, I'm about to cause you to die. Present tense. How about falamma tawafaitani? That is Quran chapter uh, chapter 5 verse uh, uh, chapter 4 verse 150 chapter 4 5 verse 117 chapter 5 117 let me read you the verse here so be accurate i don't want to make it up i give you the wrong verse oh you saw my lie the verse is not on the quran okay 117 here chapter 5 verse 117 i did not tell them except what you had what you had commanded me that serve allah my lord and your lord and I was a witness among them as long as I was with them. So when you caused me to die, that's in the past tense. Isa, son of Mary, did die. That's why your scholars, Muslim scholars, tell you, well, he died for three hours, he died for six hours, he died for uh, 11 hours. It's a joke. How do Muslims know Jesus did not die? Because one ambiguous verse in the Quran. Quran chapter 5, verse, verse uh, 4, verse 157. They did not kill him nor crucify him, but it was made to appear to them. And how this happened? Well, good luck to figure out 16 different interpretations by different Muslim scholars, and Allah knows best. I'm sorry. If Jesus did not die on the cross, and that is the falsehood of Christianity, and I am Allah, I will put a full chapter in the Quran. As a matter of fact, I maybe make it chapter 1. And I will be writing in details what exactly happened. Who is the person who died instead of Jesus? How did Jesus escape death? And why Allah did this? And in details. Nope. We got one ambiguous verse. And that ambiguous verse contradicts uh, other verses which clearly said he died. Contradiction is all over the Quran. And it's an unending project. And God help us.
Uh, well, I, if, if uh, Brother Sam, you want me to go a little bit more, we can go a bit more. If you want to stop here, we have some question answer. We can have some question answer. Brother, it's all up to on. you. No, brother, keep going, man. You you take as much time. Then you tell me, okay, Sam, I'm done. Then we have Q&A. So keep going, man. Don't You don't need to stop and ask. All right. We're, we're, we're on slide uh, 34. I skipped some, and we still have until slide 54. So we got another maybe hour or two. Well, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, Quran chapter 4 verses uh, chapter 41 verse 16 uh, contradicts Quran chapter uh, 54 verse 18. Here's two verses contradict each other. 4 1 16 is said, So we, Allah, sent on them a temperature. I don't know what this word is. Uh, asaif, asaif, uh, rihan, rihan, uh, uh, wind, strong wind. Terrible wind, whatever word, however you want to pronounce this word, uh, for miss uh, for unfortunate days, so that we might make them taste the shameful torment in this world's life and in the torment of the hereafter is more shameful and they will not be helped. It's a punishment of Allah on those people, so He sent uh, some strong wind, some terrible wind on them, and that was for. Unfortunate days, plural, it had to be three, four, or a hundred, but not less than three. Now, in Quran chapter 54, verse 18, at this is the same people, the people of Ad, denied they did not believe in the, the prophet whom Allah sent to them. Uh, and then he said, So, how was my torment and my warning? Verse 19, surely we sent a Roaring wind against them in a day of continuing misfortune. How many days? One day. And so in Quran chapter 41, Allah says that he punished the people of Ad by days, three days or more. But in Quran chapter 54, verse 18, it's one day. This is a contradiction. Okay, let's move on. When we talk about the goodness which come on us, according to the Quran, chapter uh, 4, verse 79, any goodness come on us come from Allah. And any evil come from us, it is we bring it ourselves. It's clear English, very easy to understand, as we're going to read the verse in a minute. Now, if you go to chapter 9 and verse 51, everything comes to us, good or evil, is from Allah. I mean, Allah to be punished people was good, and Allah uh, 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 reward people was good, and Allah punished people was evil. This is Clear contradiction. Let me read the verse to you in English. In Quran chapter 4, verse 79. Whatever good fortune befall you is from Allah. And whatever misfortune befall you is from your own self. English is like Arabic. Same thing. Here we go. Uh, Easy as I just read in Arabic as it is in English. Now listen to Quran chapter 9 and verse 51. Pull Allah, which in English says, Nothing can befall us except what Allah has described for us. That's good and evil. Yes, good and evil. That's contradiction. That puts the Quran aside. Okay, let's move on. Uh, this is this a weird saying a sentence in the Quran because I don't think Allah really have a full understanding of heavens and earth. As I said earlier, Allah creates the heavens and the earth, plural, plural, seven heavens, seven earths. I did not share this with you with you the hadith error, but let me share it right now. I'm, I don't have it right now on me, but if Muslim would, would say that's not true, I just say it's very easy. It's in my Quran and my computer. I'll give you the slide and we'll put and we can see it together. But for now. Muhammad was talking to his companions, his uh, followers. And I show you that these people were sujjish. I mean, uh, they're like foolish, naive, uh, ignorant, or so afraid of Muhammad. I don't know. How can I describe Muhammad's companions? So Muhammad said, do you know what is under you? I mean, literally, if you ask a kid, eight, nine years old, what's under me? Uh, the uh, carpet, the other side, the grass, the earth, dirt. No, no, no. Muslims will not dare to answer Muhammad's questions. That's how you come up with the hadith. The same Muhammad. Muhammad said, 
uh, according to many Muslim scholars, that's a strong hadith by Muslim Bukhari and everybody, uh, those powerful people told us. It's a 100% true statement. What I'm sharing with you is not made up, it's real. So Muhammad asked his companion, do you know what's under you? Oh, only Allah and the apostle. You and Allah knows, we don't know. Really? Okay, it's the earth. Oh, earth. And I can imagine all the companions, 10 of them, oh, earth, earth, oh, earth. Oh, we believe you, Muhammad. You thought, oh, yeah, yeah, it is earth. I see it, it's earth. Good. Do you know what is under it? We don't know. Only Allah and his messenger. No, you know Muhammad and Allah knows. Oh, another earth. Really? Yeah, another earth. Hey, we got two earths. No, 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 no. And another earth, another earth, another seven earths. And Muhammad said, each one of these earths is deep as if you travel 500 years. And I have to tell you, it took me and some of my friends a long time to figure out how big this universe. 500 years. What speed we're going to use for 500 years of a camel speed? Because, you know, it's a long time. Now, nobody's going to argue with Muhammad said this earth is not thick. Of five years of traveling, 500 years of traveling. Because, I mean, are you going to take your camel, go under, dig a hole in the earth and travel with your camel to measure? Of course not. They believe Muhammad. And then Muhammad told them, between each earth and the fun earth, there's empty space. So pancake, 500 years. Empty space, 500 years. Traveling. And then you get to the second earth, 500 years. And then you get to an empty space. And then another earth. 500 years, so it's 500 years earth, 500 years air, 500 years earth, 500 years air, and on and on, you get seven of them. Wow. Muhammad, the great, uh, uh, um, what do you call this, um, the guy study uh, the geology, whatever, the world, he knows it very well. Good, good. Now, then Muhammad, look at his companion. Do you know what's above you? Oh, what's oh, oh, only you? Oh, what's about you? You and Allah knows. You and Allah knows best. Okay, it's a heaven. Okay, and do you know what above the heaven? Yeah, another heaven, another heaven, another seven heaven. The same thing. Each heaven is five hundred years worth of traveling, and there's empty space, and then you get to other heaven, and empty space, another heaven. The whole universe is tiny, tiny, small universe comparing to the size of Earth. We have the the, the size of the universe we know of today. Literally, Muhammad universe is this big, and the world we know today is huge but that's how muhammad can use his imagination and see the heavens earth, and he made up this for his companion and they believe him because he will not speak but the truth now when you think about that listen to what muhammad said in quran chapter uh, al hadid al hadid what is that uh, quran chapter i don't even know what al hadid uh, i believe chapter 20 something verse 133 i can tell you in a minute what is al hadith? So we will say, Oh, you made it up. No, I did not make it up. I did not make it up. And we'll show you al hadith here. Al hadith. Al hadith. If you need the exact verse, al hadith, the iron. Al hadith. Yep, chapter 57. Chapter 57. Good. Chapter 57. In Quran, chapter 57 and verse 21. Are you still with me, Sam? Or I lost you. Lose me. Don't be scared. I'm here to hold your hand. I'll never leave you. Keep going, man. All right. So Quran, I cannot see myself in my, anymore on my computer. Quran, chapter 57 and verse 21. Uh, and, I'm sorry, and verse 133, uh, uh, first of all, Quran chapter 3, Al Amran, verse 133, we read, okay. and hasten to forgiveness from your Lord and a garden. It is its width is the heavens and the earth prepared for the fear. See, Allah gave the Muslim believers forgiveness, and Allah gives them a garden. How big is this garden? That garden as big as the heavens and the earth. How big is the heavens? It's huge. How big is the earth? We know how big is the earth. Now we're talking about earth singular here. One earth. It's like me telling you, I bought a, a, a carpet. Uh, it's like 20 million, a quarter of an inch. Really? 20 million mile and a quarter of an inch. Sound like a joke. 
Why Muhammad said as the earth to the heavens, as if the earth is huge. Muhammad does not know the size of the heavens to the size of the earth. He just making up stuff. No. If you go to a hadith, which is Quran chapter 57, verse 21. If you want, yeah. I'll read the verses for you. Put it on the slide, I'll read it. Okay, so if that's what you want, because I see you have the slide, it's 5721. Hasten yeah. to the forgiveness from your Lord and a garden, it's with like the width of the heaven, singular and the earth. Have been singular and the earth. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, when, the word like is not there. Ardaha samawat Mishnah kel samawat But that's okay. You're you're reading it from uh, other translation. That's okay. I'm reading now, yours on the on the sky. What you put up, it's right there. You put like, you center. It's on your okay. slide. <laughs> Go ahead. The heaven. Yeah. But there's no like there. But that's good. Now the second one is Quran chapter fifty-seven verse one one. Hasten to the forgiveness from your Lord and a garden. It's what's like the width of the heaven singular and the earth. So now as a question, how big is the God Muhammad? Is it as big as the seven heavens and the earth or as big as, as, big as one heaven and the earth? Can you see the contradiction here? Samawat, plural. Sama singular. The earth in both cases are singular. Okay, here is the word al earth, al art. Here is the word earth, al art. One. But here, samawat, plural, that means seven heavens, or maybe three or more. I mean, I, maybe someone say only three heavens, three of the heavens. No. I believe Muhammad means all the seven heavens. And then al sama singular. That is a contradiction in the Quran. We do not know how big. Is the heavens and the earth now? Let's go to the book of Cal, chapter 149, Quran, chapter 2, verse 149, Quran, chapter 2, the cow 149. It says here, and from water, I'm, I'm sorry, and from whatever place you come out, so turn your face toward the forbidden mosque. Now, I'm sorry, this verse fit perfectly in Mecca. As a matter of fact, if it will fit perfectly anywhere in Saudi Arabia, near Mecca. Why? Because you can always turn your face towards the Mecca, towards the Kaaba, towards the, the, the forbidden mosque, which is in Mecca. How in the world you are here in America can tell me that as you travel and as you pray and as you do, you turn your face towards Mecca. And I know, and I know, Muslim people love to believe when they pray, as, the, as we know from the Muslim prayer, they have to stand in perfect line. And the line will be facing Mecca. I'm sorry to tell you, if the earth is flat, that worked perfectly well. Because we can all look at Mecca and a flat earth. But if the earth is sphere, as we know it is, you cannot, from where I am right now in Florida, or where Brother Sam is from, wherever you are right now, different part around the world, you cannot face Mecca. Because for me, to look right now from Florida to the east, you know what I'm looking at? I'm looking at Mars. Or some other plant out in the air have nothing to do with Mecca because Mecca is right now actually under my feet. You cannot face your you, to Mecca when you pray or do the Muslim uh, prayer things like that. Okay, uh, the contradiction in this one here is so powerful. Uh, it is actually a book of um, women. Uh, this I, and, and I'm, I'm amazed. How can Muhammad be a salesman? He sold and buy goods for his uh, first wife Khadija. For some years before even he married her, uh, and he could not know how to come up with a mathematic system for the inheritance. So if you go to Quran chapter uh, uh, chapter uh, 4, the book of women and Nisa, and verse 11, and we read, the commands you can, mm, Allah commands you concerning your children to the male, the like portion of two females, so if there were more than two females, so the like, so they will have two thirds of what of that which they their father left. I'm gonna stop here because the rest of the verse they make it even complicated. A boy will get twice as more than a girl. But if there are two girls, each one of them will take a third, and the boy still get double. So Let's bring the money. We're going to break it to two-thirds for the two girls. The boy will not take a half. He can't. 
because the, the girls cut portion of what the boy will get. If we start with the boy, he will get double of what the girls get. He get a half. The less will be two quarters. That's not two thirds. As a matter of fact, Omar ibn Asab, uh, Omar ibn Khattab found a problem. We read about that in Muslims' writing. When after Muhammad died, and he was a successor. He was the Khalifa, and some guy died and had the same. He he faced the problem. He said, "How can we fix this problem? How can we give the two girls each one of them a third if the brother will take?" Twice as more than them. Mathematically, as you keep going with, if there is a mother, she takes one sixth, and then the boys and the girls is confusion. And as Muslim uh, give uh, Omar different advice, as he says, yeah, "Help me out here." And some say, "Well, you give the boy first, and then you give the girls." Or you and it is not logical to come up with this mathematics to pass inheritance from somebody die to his wife. His daughters, his children, his mom is still alive. He says alive. Read the chapter. Read Quran chapter uh, four and verse eleven, and you see it's a chaos. That is written by somebody who does not know anything about math. Muhammad had zero math. If you think about the inheritance rules he put in the Quran, um, uh, some of the things written in the Quran it tells that Allah does not really know the future. He have no clue how people are going to live in the future. For example, if I go with you to Surah Ashura, and that is verse 31, 32, 33. We read there, and you can and you cannot escape on the earth, and you do not have any friend or nor helper without Allah. Verse 32. And among his signs, one of the miracles, the signs of Allah in the Quran. Or in this world are the jawar. The jawar is the word uh, for ships, uh, uh, boats. Okay, it's not Arabic word. Muhammad used in the Quran in the sea, like alam, like uh, al alam. Kal alam uh, is some, some Muslims can say alam means a huge building, big building. Of course, uh, in Muhammad days, uh, there was people building ships. The Egyptian built ships for years. Now he said in verse 33, which is very important. If he wills, he will cause the wind to stay still, and it lays motionless on its back. So if Allah want to stop the ships from moving in the earth, all what he do is stop the wind. Because we know the uh, the piece of fabric he put above the ship, I don't know what you call it in Arabic, uh, in English. In, uh, in, uh, anyway, which when the wind heard it, it will make the ship move. Oh, man, I can't remember this word. Sammy, you should know it by now. But that, that is how the ship used to move in Muhammad days. But I'm sorry. If Allah is God, he should tell us more than that because he knows that today we do not use the wind to move the ships. I mean, these huge ships, which is really big. Of course, Muhammad would never dream to have this uh, exist in the, in the universe in the future. They run with engine. They run with motors. They don't run with wind. You don't need the wind to run the ships. That is a sign, a miracle of Allah in the Quran, which tells me that Allah does not know better than what Muhammad knows and he saw by his own eyes and experience in his life. Now, uh, another one error in the Quran, obviously, which is, does not make any sense, where milk come from? Where milk come from? In Quran, chapter 16, a book of Nahl, Kitab al Nahl, chapter 16, verse 66. And here we go, we see that, and surely there is a lesson for you in the livestock. Uh, Allah, Allah is talking to us about the great miracle, about how we get milk, how we give you drink from what is in their bellies. I'm sorry. Milk does not come from the belly of the cow or the belly of the camel. The belly have nothing to do with milk. And look at this, between extortion of and blood. I mean, I'm sorry, this has nothing to do with the reality. Milk has nothing to do with what's inside the belly and what in the blood. And this pure milk is uh, agreeable, agreeable uh, to those to the drinkers, to those uh, who would like to drink it. Now, another error also similar to the previous one about God does not Allah, the God of Muhammad does not know the future of how uh, things will be in the near future. And that is in Quran uh, chapter seventeen, Surah Al Asra and verse seventeen, as we read it, and indeed we have. Honored the children of Adam, we have carried them on the land and the seas. You mean only people can walk on earth? 
and only people can use ships? Anybody can come up with this. Even an 18 years old can tell you, oh, yeah, people walk on earth and people can ride the ship in the water. But how about if Allah is all knowing and the Quran is a miracle book and there's signs and miracles and Allah showed, He would say, and we carry them on the air. And people will wonder how can Allah carry people in the air until the day come an airplane is made and here we are walking on earth, driving a car on earth. Uh, rather than a camel on earth, we can ride the ships in the water and fly near our planes. But Allah does not know what is coming in the future. And the, the miracle is, ama is amazingly, the signs of Allah in the Quran is always something you can see by eye, something you experience. One of the signs of Allah, he sent rain from heaven to earth. Really? You mean you need to be a prophet to figure out that? And by the rain plans, bro. Really? There is no... The, the verse of the Quran, the signs and the miracles which Muhammad showed the Quran, any person with logic can figure it out. Obviously, that does not even count the errors of the Quran and the contradiction as we are sharing so far in the Quran. Uh, how about this one? Allah does not know the future as well. In Quran chapter 6, verse 97, that's the book of An'am, uh, chapter 6, verse 97, it says here, and he is who, uh, and he is who has made the stars for you so that you may be guided by it in the darkness well how about gps i don't need a star i never i never drove a car today uh, looking at the star can you imagine driving looking up the sky driving a car you're not going to make it to your destiny most likely you're going to hit a tree or hit another car or get off the road flip over and die on the road okay so uh, the knowledge of uh, muhammad the verse of all of the quran is logical common sense some of it to that which people lived in in muhammad days uh, yes you can uh, travel by the stars and the babylonians the iraqi people have figured this out years and years even in jesus days they saw the stars and the father stars and they can they have the study the egyptian knows the stars and they study the the stars that's how they can build stuff in egypt using the stars you know the east from the west and north from the south the sun and set and the sunrise so but Miracles? No. Signs? No. Because obviously, if there is a sign or miracles, we can literally learn more about the future than, than that which Muhammad has seen and observed by his eyes in Muhammad days. Uh, plenty of error, plenty of contradiction. How about this one? Uh, let me close with this one, if you don't mind. Give me just a few more minutes here, because I believe this is very important. When I was working my Quran, and I said, surely Allah was, and when I say, surely Allah was, in Allah can, eh? Uh, some of those who are helping me to edit my writing and work on the Quran, those English speakers, they said, well, no, Allah was, not, that's not good English. I said, what do you mean? He said, surely Allah is. Not surely Allah was. How can Allah was? If Allah is God, he cannot be was. Well, guess what? Let me share with you some of these verses. In Allah, kana aliyan kabiran. Quran chapter uh, 4 and verse 34. I'm going to read to you this verse quickly here. 434, it says, the long verse, in the end of it, it says here, and surely Allah was higher, big. First of all, when people read my translation, say some. <laughs> There's no such thing. What is Allah higher because I'm sorry. In Allah, surely Allah can was alien higher kabir big. I I cannot correct the Quran. I cannot uh, edit the Arabic uh, to make it good English and change the word of Allah to make it acceptable. That's what Allah said. Surely Allah higher big. Surely Allah was higher big. You mean Allah is no longer higher? Allah is no longer big. By the way, the word Allahu Akbar, it means Allah is bigger, not God is great. The word great is Azim. Azam is greater. Uh, Al Azam, the greatest. So, Allahu Akbar, Allah is bigger. So, that's the word Kabir, means bigger. Now, if you look to Quran, uh, Surah Al uh, uh, 62, so, and surely Allah is the highest, the big. Surely Allah is the highest, the big. So, he did not use the word was. So in my translation, you can see Allah was, Allah was, Allah was. And you see, that's bad translation. No, that's an accurate translation. Why Muhammad put kana? It is to end the verse with 
كبيرا رحيما غفورا see what I mean here when you put it and 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 you keep the poetry of the Quran if he will not you put the word كان then it's not going to be كبيرا it will be كبير إن الله كان عليا كبيرا see كبيرا take the word كان إن الله علي كبير not كبيرا to put كبيرا you have to put كان to put كان you make Allah in the past as Allah changed Allah was not no uh, chapter 4 verse 129 surely Allah was forgiven merciful فإن الله كان غفورا رحيما you mean Allah is no longer forgiven you mean Allah is no longer uh, uh, merciful because was mean it's the past. That means Allah has changed. He's no longer forgiven. He's no longer merciful. Similar to that, in Allah kana ghafoor rahiman in the book of Ahzab, that's Quran chapter 33, verse 24. Now, I can show you the same words in Quran chapter 8, verse 69, and Quran chapter 5, verse 39, where we say, Surely Allah forgiven merciful. In Allah ghafoor rahimun. غفور رحيم مش not غفورا رحيما. So it depends on the poetry. What Muhammad wants the end of the verses to be. To make the poetry of the Quran smooth in the rest of the verses. If he wanted غفورا رحيما, he had to add the word كان, which means was. That means Allah changed. That means we have a problem. Because Allah cannot be God. Because if God if Allah is God, he cannot change. He's always forgiven. He's always merciful. So we got it both way. In Allah can ghafoor and rahiman. Surely Allah was forgiven, merciful. And we got it also. In Allah ghafoor and rahim. Ghafoor and rahim. Surely Allah forgiven, merciful. Both are in the Quran. My translation is accurate. I'm not going to take was out like others do. Because if you take was out, then you're not peaceful in your translation. And obviously, you will not figure this out unless you go to the Arabic of the Quran. Similar to that, uh, uh, you know, many, many verses here. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلَى كُلُّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ And Allah was mighty over everything. Wait a minute. You mean he's no longer mighty because was? Yes, I can show you in another, in another passage. This is what is written in chapter 33, verse 27. I can show you what's written in the book of Cal, chapter 2, verse 20. In Allah, kana, uh, in Allah, ala kul shayin qadirun. In Allah, I'm sorry. In Allah, ala kul shayin, shayin qadir. There's no was there. Why? Because Muhammad does not need qadiran, aliman, rafi'an. You see, you follow me? So if Muhammad want to keep that, and, 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 he has the word was. If not, you will know what the word was. Both verses, both systems are written throughout the Quran. And that is to help the poetry of the Quran. I think that's enough, Brother Sam. I think we got plenty of information for tonight, and we will do some more in the future. These are the few verses which I literally picked up for our program for tonight. Okay, my man. All I want to say, hold on, let's see. Are we okay? Okay. Here, we're going to go to questions in a minute. But before that, I need to say something, Usama. Are you ready for me to say? Sure. Okay. Sure. You was pretty, and you was intelligent, and you was a good man, okay? So I want to make sure. You was a good man, you was pretty, and you was intelligent, because I want to keep the rhyme. Kana Usama Habiban. All right, just kidding. <laughs> okay, all joking aside, praise the Lord Jesus Christ. We had a good crowd today. I am really blessed that we had a good turnout to come here to this brother. You see why I love this brother. I love his passion. I love the way he preaches. I don't just say it in front of him. I love his style of preaching. I love his style of teaching. I love his passion. That's what we need. We need more people like this for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now, we're going to put in the description box, I think we already did. If not, we will. Osama Dakdok's YouTube page. He has a YouTube page. He has a website, and he has a Patreon account. Now, let me just share this before we go into the Q&A. If I know we're now going through very hard financial times with COVID-19 and the scare and things shutting down, and I know many of you brothers and sisters are barely making it, but by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus will sustain us. 
and give us our daily bread until we enter his presence. There's nothing that we'll go through that by the power of the Holy Spirit, we won't be able to overcome. By the power of the Holy Spirit in us, we are more than overcomers. Even if it means we have to struggle and be stretched, Jesus will sustain us because he's life. So the Lord Jesus bless every one of you, provide for your needs, take care of your children, your family members, and the elderly. Now, if you're only able to support one person because you don't have the financial means, here's my suggestion. That one person should be Usama Dr. Now, I'm going to say, I'll say why Usama Dr. Not only is he a man of integrity who loves Jesus, is willing to die for the Lord. Because obviously, look, he's out there public. People see him. His name is there. He's not afraid to die for Jesus. Not only that, that he's a man of integrity. Not only does he know the Quran inside and out and loves the Lord, knows the Bible. But also, I have witnessed this man. And he doesn't know I'm saying this. I didn't say, hey, I'm going to. Because it says in Proverbs 27, verse 2. Proverbs 27, verse 2. Let another man praise you. Do not praise yourself. I've actually been to his meetings several times. This man will drive days, hours, 16 hours driving to preach in small churches. Like one time we're in Wisconsin. It was only about 20 people. And he doesn't put a price on his speaking. Sometimes he goes there out of pocket because they're not able to give him his due because they're a very poor church. He's not about the money. So if there is one man that I can tell you who's not doing it for the money, and I pray all of us have that integrity, we don't do it for money, it's this man. Honestly, I've been a witness to it. He doesn't say. And he's in ministry, and he depends on the goodness of God working through his people to support him. If there's a man that should be supported, it's him. I'm being honest. Because this man is not doing it for the money. And I know personally, he's gone to places, he's gone to places, where they haven't been able to reimburse him, and he goes there out of pocket, driving from place to place. Now that's that's why you should support him. If you can only support one man, this man right here. Now, secondly, you mentioned your eyes. You just had surgery, right, brother? Did you cataract, have my left eye? Yeah, cataract. He just had cataract surgery. So this is what I was saying about our eyesight. Even as we're getting older, we're getting older, I can see my eyes are wearing out. The man just had cataract surgery. He's recovering. Even though, and today, what was it? Today or is it, what did you do today? No, it's like five days, six days ago. Six today days my ago. Sixth day. But you had to go to therapy today? Uh, I, I saw him this morning. Yeah. Okay, yes. Now, it's going to take a while for him to get his full recovery, his sight. Pray for this man. Pray for his sight. Pray for his health. Pray for his wife. Pray for his son, that the Lord Jesus will provide for them. The Lord Jesus will bless them. Amen. Pray for us, we in the ministry, because me too, my sight's going bad. Pray that the Lord, if he's pleased, to keep, keep our sight, perfect sight, physically and spiritually, to use our eyes to study, to destroy all these false religions for the glory of Christ. Pray for our health and pray for this man. If there's one man you can support, for example, all you can do is support one person. You've been supporting me? Support him. Support him. I want to see this man fully supported. Because he's a blessing to the church of Jesus Christ. And moreover, get his Quran translation. The generous Quran. Guys, put the link to his Patreon page. And the link to his website. And the link to you, uh, YouTube channel here in the comment section. will be in the description bo uh, box. You need to get his Quran. You saw he translated the Quran as accurately as possible. Accurately as possible. Now, what's the name of your YouTube channel, brother? The generous Quran, the generous Quran, even the, the cover is accurate. The generous Quran is the Al Quran Al Karim. That's right. So that's the name of the translation, but your YouTube channel, what's the name of it? Do you know? Oh, my YouTube, I uh, think, just the straight way. The straight way. That's the name of his the website, straight way. straight way. Do get the copy of the Quran because you saw he tried to be super accurate to the point it doesn't make sense in English. Now you're going to pick it up saying, see, this is Egyptian. Illiterate Egyptian doesn't know English. No, the reason why the English reads badly is reflecting the Quran. The Quran is badly. Now, with that said, I want to exhort every one of you. Times are going to get harder until the Lord returns. Time will get, is going to get harder until the Lord returns. So here's my advice. Pray and seek the Lord's counsel. This is the time that Christians need to learn to just get by by their necessities, daily necessities. In other words, 
We're now at a time where we have to make sacrifices. The one sacrifice you don't make is for the glory of Christ. In other words, the tendency among people is when things get hard, they sacrifice from supporting the work of God, the ministers of God, or taking care of orphans and widows, the poor and the needy. Here's my advice exhortation. Seek the face of the Holy Spirit to confirm this, that it's not from me. As times get harder, you're going to need to be sacrificing things so you can be able to provide for your family, which is your first priority. The things you sacrifice are the things you don't need. If you have two cars, you don't need two cars, sell that one car to have more money to not only take care of your family, to take care of orphans and widows because we cannot neglect them, to take care of the poor, we can't neglect them, and to continue to support ministries because right now, more than ever, we need more soldiers, more warriors in ministry because the time is at hand. Jesus is coming sooner than ever before. Again, I'm not a prophet. I'm not assigning a date. He's coming today or 20 years from now. But as you can see the signs, it's getting worse, and it's only going to get worse because things are going to get very bad before Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. And we need more people preaching the gospel, getting people saved, destroying all these ideologies and religions and worldviews erected by Satan to mislead people like ultimate, <clears throat> ultimate pagan, ultimate stone smoochers here, this wicked, vile pagan who makes Muhammad look intelligent. He too needs to get saved. Otherwise, he's going to be damned in hell with his fake prophet, Muhammad. So pray where you can sacrifice some things you don't need so you don't sacrifice from the work of the Lord. So that said, folks, in Jesus' name, Jesus' name, Q&A, baby, Q&A. Now, Mohammedans, this is your time to ask this man questions. This is your time to ask this man questions. So I'm going to field the questions. Any questions? Let's see. Oh, by the way, <clears throat> you wanted me to read the hadith from Sahih Muslim. Because you mentioned about the six days of creation, eight days of creation. Now, guys, I have articles with all these narrations. So go to answeringislamblog.wordpress.com or answeringislam.net. Type in contradictions in the Quran. Here's the hadith that he was referring to <clears throat> because you had mentioned it and you asked me to read it. Here is Sahih Muslim. Sahih Muslim. Mm -hmm. Let me read it for you guys. Oops. I just made it. Oh, my goodness. All right. So, Sami, you know I got mental issues, right? No, you're doing good, man. No, you know why? Because I just X'd out, man. I just, I just, <laughs> oh, boy, hold on. Let me get it for you. Uh, sorry, guys. It just tells you. I can, you lost, I can get it. I can get you the one I have here, but I have to. I'm afraid to lose the screen now. I'm back yeah. to the screen here. Yeah, it's Sahih Muslim. In the English, it's number 6707. 6707. It's Sahih Muslim number 6707. I want to read it because I also have Ibn Kathir. Here it goes. Sahih Muslim, book 39, number 6707. Abu Huraira reported that Allah's messenger took hold of my hands and said, now guys, count the days. Allah's messenger took hold of my hands and said, Allah the exalted and glorious, Azwajal. Allah Azwajal. Kana. All right, anyway. Created the clay on Sunday, and he created the mountains on Sunday, and he created the trees on Monday, and he created the things entailing labor on Tuesday, and he created light on Wednesday, and he created animals to spread on Thursday, and created Adam after Asr on Friday, the last creation at the last hour of the hours of Friday between Asr and night. Did you catch it? Six days here. That's right. And Adam was created on Friday. Now, here is another narration that Ibn Kathir narrates in Tafsir Ibn Kathir. Anyway, Tafsir Ibn Kathir, the abridged English version of his commentary when he's commenting on the days of creation. He again quotes mm -hmm. Imam Ahmed, Musnad Ahmed, Musnad Ahmed, Imam Ahmed. Recorded Abu Huraira saying, Allah's messenger told me, Allah created the dust on Saturday. Oh, guys, uh, I mentioned Saturday, right? Osama, or did I make a mistake? Yeah. yeah. Because I think I miscounted again. I apologize. We'll read it again. I think I was supposed to be Saturday, but I said Sunday because my eyesight is bad. All right. Yeah. Allah created the dust on Saturday and he created the mountains on Sunday. He created trees on Monday 
He created the unpleasant things on Tuesday. He created the light on Wednesday. And he spread the creatures through, throughout it on Thursday. And he created Adam after Asr, between Asr and the night. Okay, so now I did miscalculate. Guys, apologize. Let me read that. Two seven days. These are one seven days. I know. Yeah. yeah, but I miscounted it. I counted six. I'm sorry. Let me read Abu okay. Say Muslim. Even the English is bad. You thought the Arabic was confusing. Woo! All right. Here goes Say Muslim 6707. Let's count again. See, I suck at math. I'm terrible at math. Abu Raida reported, Allah's messenger. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Took my hands and he said, Allah, the exalted and glorious Azwajal, created the clay on Saturday. Created the mountains on Sunday. Yeah, see, I did say Sunday earlier. Saturday, Sunday. Created the trees on Monday. Created the things entailing labor on Tuesday. Created light on Wednesday. And caused the animals to spread on Thursday. And created Adam. Adam after five, seven Adam. days. Say sorry, guys, for miscounting. Notice here, Sam, we did not hear about the creation of the heavens, period. He forgot the heaven in these two accounts. That's right. So that's why we have to add two more days, the creation of the heaven, to make it nine days. So I'm confused. The Hadith say seven days, and then you add the heavens. That would be nine days. But the Quran says six days, and another place, eight days. So guys, guys, and God bless you, super chatters. Uh, forgive me for not mentioning you because I'm so interested in hearing him speak. So God bless you. Thank you for the support. Make sure you support him as well. Now, what's the questions, folks? Any questions? Sorry. Oh. Oh, this guy, huh? Uh, uh, conveniently, look what I posted. This guy, Abbas Agha, he thinks he's a Muslim apologist. He's now embarrassing Muhammad. He said, Muta is inspired by Allah. Do you practice it? Oh, in Amazing Grace said that. I apologize. Amazing Grace is saying to this Muslim, Muta is inspired by Allah. Do you practice it? So, Usama, can you tell the non-Muslims, many Christians know, many don't, and Amazing Grace was telling was telling this to Abbas. Sorry, Abbas. I thought you were smart. I didn't think you were this stupid. So, again, you're not that stupid to say Allah inspired Muta. But, again, Amazing Grace did that for you. Now, Usama, did Allah send down the command to do Muta? What is Muta? And what would be the modern equivalent of Muta? What would we call it today? Uh, prostitution. Wow. Uh, Quran chapter 24, it says here, and married women are also forbidden except all what your right hand possesses. This is the decree of Allah for you, and it is lawful to you beside this, beside this to seek out women for with your money, chaste without fornication, and whatever you enjoy, that's the word mut'ah, whatever you enjoy, by it and it here in my English translation, their sexual part parts. So of from them, they are the female. So give them their wages. It is an ordinance and blah blah blah. Uh, the watching uh, the match for fun. I studied in a college in Egypt uh, when I was in Alexandria uh, institution high school uh, of uh, social work after high school. I studied Sharia Islamic law for two years, and I was shocked, Sam. First time I heard the professor from the Azhar University who come and teach us about marriage and divorce in Islam. When he mentioned that, literally I was embarrassed. Especially I was sitting next to some godly Christian sisters in Christ who are in the class. So he said that a man can marry a woman for an hour, a day, or but at a day, a, a, a day, or some of a day, a few hours, or three days, or whatever. And uh, this guy was a Sunni, and he said, Muhammad allowed it. And then he forbid it, and he allowed it, and he forbid it, and then he allowed it, and he forbid it. Third time, he never allowed it again. And then he was he was nice. He said the Shia I still believe in it and still practice it, but it is forbidden. Well, trust me, brother Sam, as you know, nothing in Islam is forbidden. When I read a verse like that in Quran chapter four, verse twenty-four, and I see that Allah gave the Muslim the permission to uh, uh, to enjoy a, a sex relationship with female. And gives them their wages. I know that some would say, well, that's he's talking about marriage. No, it's not talking about marriage. This is not marriage. The word marriage never mentions the Quran, period. There is no zawaj, never mentions the Quran. Let me tell you why. The word zawaj in Arabic, it means to become one. So, like the scripture teach a man, leave his father and his mother and unite with his wife and they become one flesh. That is zawaj. 
Muhammad never used a waj. The Muhammad used the word nukah. It is unpolite word. It's equal to the word f. Uh, the F word in English, so I, I, my board did not allow me to put it in my English translation as F, so I put it have sex. So you can have sex. Why? Because Quran 4 3 said what? Does that word you know? He did not say marry, he said, so have sex with, with two or three or four. When you have one man and two women, that's not Zawaj. You cannot use the word Zawaj, it does not work because there's three people here. Zawaj only for two. So, anyway, so this is not marriage. It is sexual relationship, and it is equal to prostitution. Sadly, uh, Muslims practice this uh, not only in Iraq and Syria and Lebanon and some people in Egypt, which is marriage for fun for the Shiite. Muslims practice it here in America. I mean, it, we, we have plenty of evidence, so we're not going to get into it. That's enough. The reason why I'm laughing is, guys, this is why you got to get his Quran translation. He tries to uh, translate accurately as possible. So the non-Arabic speaking Christians, so they understand. The word used, nikah, nikah. One more time so you understand. That's why I love you, man. You are a gift to the church. I really mean that from my heart. I thank the Lord that I'm serving with you. Thank you. Can you tell them the Arabic word used in the Quran, nikah, which some translations say marry them. What does that actually mean, literally, nikah? Having sex. Now you're giving the G-rated version, right? <laughs> I don't know if we have any children or like, it is F word. And for example, in Quran chapter 33, in Quran chapter 33, verse 50, Allah has given Muhammad special privilege. And if a believing woman offer herself to the apostle, to the Prophet of Allah, in Arad and Nabi, and yes, if the Prophet desired to F her, it's a privilege from Muhammad alone. That's the word, yes, thank you, mean the actual act of having sexual relationship. It's it just, you know, therefore, it. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, but, no. But I, I could not say that word in front of my mama. I'm not kidding you. When my mama was alive and I, I tried to be silly and I started reading that these verses of the Quran, mama looked at me and said, shame on you, son. You have no respect for your mama. <laughs> so, I, Hey, bro, you know why? We, see, guys, why do I say to you, honestly, you need to be thanking Jesus, praising Jesus, that God has raised up such mighty men. Pray for us. Fast for us, for our protection, our family, and for the support Amen. to come in. Uh, isn't he amazing? How many of you non-Arabic speakers would know that the Quran uses the Arabic word for F? So that literally the Quran is saying, you prophet can F them. F them. And this is a holy book. Now, I'm going to have Usama come back. I'm going to even prepare him. Within two weeks, I want you to come back, God willing, to talk about women and sex in Islam. So prepare something for us. Uh, not next week, the week after. I'll contact you, but prepare. We're going to have him come back to talk about women and sex in Islam. But it, since we're on that topic, since I'm on topic, in chapter 55, verse 56 of the Quran, if you mind opening it, because I want people to see, because you see, we have Muslims saying, your Bible full of porn. It's a porn book. How can it be holy? You know, it, you know that is okay. Now, Abbas, we'll get to you. We'll get to you, friend. We're, and Abbas, I keep challenging you. Call me so we can debate, but you're scared. Like Yahya, call me so we can have fun at your expense and your profit's expense. In chapter 55, verse 56. In chapter 55, verse 56. Okay. Yes. Can you read and tell us how nasty, how graphic is this term? And what does this do with Jenna? Doesn't it make Jenna a whorehouse? Uh, yeah, and then those who restrain their eyes, who neither human nor jinn has ever had sex with before them. Uh, these are the Horlain, the, the beautiful forever virgin. And if, if you, I, I know, so, so what's amazing, brother Sam, the Muslim are embarrassed, are embarrassed of the prophet, embarrassed of the Quran, and they come up with this weird, weird interpretation. They will tell you, Horlain is actually a white raisin. And you eat, Brother Sam, in the garden. So Allah provide for the Muslim men in the garden white raisin to eat. I'm sorry. Uh, that's not what Muhammad said. That's not what Allah in the Quran said. That's not what any Muslim said. Sorry, but let me turn this off. Okay. We got something. We got someone right. calling me right, right now during a live stream. Hey, Ishmael, wait. When he's done, I will then take care of you. 
All right. All right. So uh, obviously, Muhammad said these are beautiful, special creation, uh, special women. Uh, Muhammad did not describe them as white raisins. He described them like women with big black eyes, big breasts, big boobs, and uh, big butts, big everything. I mean, literally, everything is big, okay? And these are so white that you can see the blood running in their veins. And they're always virgin. After Muslim men have sex with them, immediately they turn to virgin. So they're always virgin. And um, and there's so much stuff that we, we, we said it, enough. And that 55 verse 56, which is also in 74, does it say no man or jinn has yet And doesn't that because in the Halali Khan and per, per, in the parentheses has opened their hymens with sexual intercourse? Would you use that language around women? Uh, I, I don't want to even say it in front of this camera, not around the woman. That's, I, I don't see word, That's how yeah. bad the word is. Okay, now, Abbas did ask a question. See, he thinks he knows Arabic, Wasama, and you are Egyptian, so you're not Arabic. Yeah. Oh, these stone liquors. Stone liquor. Hold on, let me say, stone liquor. Be patient, and I will muzzle your profit. Sorry about that. Sorry about that, my friend. He, he won't be patient. Okay, now here's what what Ibn Abbas said. I just posted, I thought about it. Now they want to call, now they want to be brave. Okay, here's a question. So you don't know Arabic. Yeah. 41.9 is a question posed by Allah and should not be included in the count in the days of creation. Otherwise, why would Allah repeat it in verses 11, 12? No contradiction. Allah Akbar! I got you, ya kafir. 41.9. Yeah. All right. Sense? You understand? I am opening the phone. He's right asking now. a question, Osama, and therefore it's not connected. There's no contradiction. See what they do to the Arabic? Man, I'm telling you, uh, I, I'm going to learn from this brother, and uh, we're willing to learn from him if he will uh, just be honest with himself. I'm opening the Quran right now. This is the Saudi Arabia website, uh, chapter 41, Al Hajarat, verse 9. It's a little bit slow. But this is the only website. Where I can get the interpretation of all Muslim scholars a little bit slow. So here we go. I I got it open. Praise God. And we're gonna see here. When Taifatan min al mu'mini nakhtatalu. No, akhtatala, not akhtatalu. Akhtatalu is wrong. What did you what are you talking about? That see, here's the problem, sir. This brother is asking that question, still have the Islamic glasses on his eye. And trust me, if you have your Islamic glasses on your eye. You will never see anything wrong. There's nothing wrong with Islam. Period. Everything is great. Iqtatalu, wrong. Iqtatala is right. Because talk about two. Musanna, Musanna. Jamma, Jamma. Fard, Fard. Single, single. Dual, dual. Plural, plural. What is so hard for you to figure out? That's an error in the Quran. Anyway. Kind so he's saying that, okay, now that separates 11 and 12. So that's not, you don't count the days as separate. So they're not eight days. Because in verse 9, it's a question. So then verses 11 and 12 is not separate dates. It's part of the earlier days. Osama, what's wrong with you? Yeah. Two days plus two days, that makes them four. Really? <laughs> All right. Well, two days it. and four days makes them six. Not, not two plus two. Yeah. I'm telling yeah. you. Yeah. If, if he can find me an answer for what we said in Quran chapter 4, verse 11 concerning the inheritance. I mean, I love math. I like numbers. I tried to figure out how in the world even Omar could not figure it out. Yeah. We got Omar's own words. When, when this guy died and he left two daughters and, and, uh, and, uh, and a son, you cannot give each one of these two daughters one third and the same time the son will give double of them. If the son gives double of them, and you take half, each one of them get a quarter, not two thirds. Hello, math. <laughs> but now he got you. He got you. Abbas said, Mr. Osama, you just exposed your ignorance. Or explain the word nikah tumu in 3349 it, 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 if it does not mean marriage. My challenge to you. Okay, it's very simple. Once again, Zawad, if he understands Arabic, is to become one. A male and a female become one. That is a wash. Allah said, marry what? Two? One was going to be mixed with two. You call this marriage? That's why Muhammad could not use the word zawaj. Even though he used the word zawjah. Zawjah, he meant his wife. 
which actually written in a masculine is supposed to be zawjati. Zawjati. So Muhammad knows the word zawj, okay, which means the partner, the husband, but he put it wrong. It's supposed to be zawjati, okay, but he was zawj, but that's okay. But all these verses which we have sex with, he did not use the word zawaj. He used the word nukah. It is the doctrine of nukah. Here we go. Reliance of the traveler. Reliance of the traveler. I'm going to show you now in that book. It said nukah. Nukah. Not, not marriage. Nukah. Having sex, not marriage, means the wash. Two different words. So, uh, I'm sorry. Even in the Sharia book here, I don't see the word marriage. As you're looking for as you're looking, I just want to repeat. So, the, Muhammad used zawjah for the wives, even though it's masculine. So, literally, it's your husband's Muhammad. So, Muhammad had husbands. <laughs> anyway, just go ahead. He's going to find it for you. Yeah, right? Because that's what you said. You said zawjah is masculine. Z and then what was the feminine feminine form? Zawjah. 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 He's talking about his zawjah, but he said zawjah. zawjah. Five or six. Husbands. Yeah, go ahead. Look at this. Here we go. Five or six. That's embarrassing, man. That's what we have here? That's crazy. What do we have here? Go ahead. al nukah The chapter of having sex, not the waj. Two different words. The waj is marriage. Nukah is the other word, the bad one. So with that said, I don't know if there's any other questions that are because, okay, Abbas, I guess Abbas said something. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Okay, now, guys, this is the spirit of Muhammad. This is the spirit of Muhammad. He says, tell your Arab friend that if you want to do nikah with his daughter, see the outcome. Oh, so, amazing grace. I apologize. Amazing grace. You keep confusing me, man. I see the word Abbas, and then I go on the attack. I'm thinking it's, it's Abbas. I'm sorry. This is Amazing Grace, a brother in Jesus. Yeah. Who is your friend? Uh, this, uh, and really, seriously, I'm going to open it now for those who will join us in two weeks. If somebody is a good Muslim and he has the guts to read to us what is written in page 610, 610, in the book of the Rise of the Traveler. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to open it like that. And I'm going to carry it like that. And I'm going to bring it to the screen like that. And I'm going to read. All the way until the last word, okay? My dear Muslim friends, here look at the page number is in the bottom here, 610. And here is a book on the top about justice. What book? It's the book of Reliance of the Traveler. If some Muslim can have a guts to read to us that one program, not the same. This is 1,200 pages book. 1,200 pages book. They're all translated Arabic and English. You come to this one, 012.3, only in Arabic, no English. And I wonder, why the Muslim did not put the English? Who's going to read this Arabic understand? If some Muslim have the guts to come when we do about marriage in Islam or women in Islam and read to us that simple, I'm going to put it in a big square, I'm going to show it in the book. So people may think I make it up. If somebody has the guts to read to us what is written in the Arabic language and translate it to English. If somebody will come and do it, I will quit my ministry. I will no longer be a minister for the uh, revealing for the straight away grace ministry, and I'll become a good Muslim imam. You got it. No kidding. I mean, it is so Trust sick. Them. It is so garbage that I doubt and I dare a Muslim imam who speak Arabic can read to us what is written in it and tell our audience how beautiful and how moral Islam is that a man can do what is written in that one sentence. Actually, what? Two sentences. Two lines. I challenge this Abdul here and whoever else is going to show up in the, in our next program. I hope that between here and there, we get a good doing it. 10,000 people watching that video. And praise God that somebody will come and remove me from my ministry. And I'll end the street web grace ministry. If some Muslim can read to us these two sentences, it's in Arabic. They did not translate it, Sam. They can tell us what it says in English. And I will be honored to hear it. Everybody can hear it, and we all be, we all can see the shahad, and we all leave Christianity. That's the way. That's the way it's gonna go. It is so embarrassing that I am really. I have to pray hard to be able to tell you, my dear friends, what is written in these two sentences: the garbage of the garbage of Allah and Muhammad. No more, no less.
Yep, yep. Yeah, yeah. And Abbas, make sure, in fact, here, I'm going to even schedule you. Not this Friday, Osama. If you're free, next Friday. This Friday, I have Eddie Dalcor. If you're free next Friday, I'll have you do Woman and Sex in Islam. So, Abbas, you can come there and you can bring up Surah 3349. Even I don't know Arabic and I know how to refute you on 3349. So, guys, Lord willing, if he's free, I'll confirm it afterwards. Not this Friday, the Friday after, I'll have him on. Because I don't really see any questions that are relevant because the Christians were L A many because they could see clearly all the gross errors of the Quran and thank God for your ministry. The Muslims are just, you know. After this, I want to silence this Muhammadan, this filthy, wicked Muhammadan, this demon who keeps calling me. So, guys, right after I'm done with him, I'm going live with this Muhammadan to punish Muhammad and bury Muhammad further in hell by the grace of Jesus, Muhammad's God and judge. Amen. But with that said, we're going to wrap it up. Lord willing, not this Friday. Next Friday, I'll have him on Women and Sex in Islam if he's available. If not, we'll work it out. I'll announce it. But tomorrow, I will be, Brother Sam, I will yeah. be there, Lord is willing. Amen. We're going to schedule it. But tomorrow, Lord willing, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, our very own Ariel Gonzalez. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Tomorrow, invite people. He's going to talk about the Roman Catholic view of justification. Tomorrow, 8 p.m., Ariel Gonzalez. We love you, Osama. The links to his website, to his YouTube channel, and to his patrons is going to be in the description box. This is a man you need to support. He loves the Lord. He doesn't do it for money. Pray for him, his wife, and son, that God will bless them and preserve them from the attacks of Satan. This man's a warrior. So, Lord, I'm going to see you in two Fridays from now, Osama. Lord's willing. Lord's and for willing. the rest of you, you, in 15 minutes, I'm going live with this wicked Mohammedan to school him. He may be another barking Mohammedan, but we'll muzzle him for the glory of Jesus. So don't go anywhere. 15 minutes, I'm back. Love you guys. Christ is risen, risen indeed. Take care. Amen. Praise God. Thanks, Sam.